to start university education. Do you seek where you can be a total person and enjoy the best of university training in a serene and conducive environment with modern infrastructure, qualified lecturers and staff? Then the search is over. Thomas Adeumi University or Kokwara State is the place for you. Our curriculum is designed to meet student entrepreneur and technical skills necessary to fit into the dynamics of the society. Admissions are currently ongoing into the faculties of basic medical sciences, computing and applied sciences, management and social sciences, to provide the academic springboard for greater heights in life, all at affordable fees and convenience of payment. Visit our website www.tau.edu.ng. Call 0803 288 5843 or 0803 All right, so I, I was actually, I was supposed to have um, a session about uh, TensorFlow uh, yesterday. Uh, so my session was also among those sessions that couldn't, you know, come up. So I just, you know, begged for 20 minutes for today to just talk about it and uh, we move. So after my session, our sponsor, DSN, Data Science Network, will come on board with a deck and we go break our session. Um, Please let me have my session. So, my name is Ibrahim Malagoke. Uh, I'm a software engineer and also the lead of TensorFlow Ibadan. So, when you see me, you can always see Ibadan, right? So, yeah. So, what I'm going to be talking about is um, unlocking the power of AI, transforming the industry with TensorFlow. So if you've heard about TensorFlow or used TensorFlow before in this house, can you signify, please? Okay, so not everyone. So you've not heard about TensorFlow before, let me see. Wow. Really? Cool. All right. So let's move. Um, so you know, straight to the point. So TensorFlow is an open source uh, software library for machine learning uh, is a powerful tool you know, that can use to build machine learning models for a variety of tasks, including uh, image recognition, natural language processing, and speech uh, recognition. And TensorFlow as a, as, as a library is one of the most used ML framework in the industry today. It's being used by companies of all sizes from startups to large enterprises to be uh, to build you know intelligent applications all right not yet okay so the ad the agenda for today is just tell you what the what tensorflow is all about how it works how tensorflow works examples of tensorflow applications um, and tensorflow within you know talking about the component of uh, tensorflow and how to get started using tensorflow and I also do um, sharing of our community. All right. So, please, I'm still waiting for this slide, though. All right. TensorFlow was developed by uh, Google Brain, so uh, it's a Google product. So before now, internally, Google has been using TensorFlow in-house for their ML works before they actually launched it in okay thank you okay all right okay so here is the agenda all right so um, TensorFlow it's as, as, as an ML framework it's uh, accelerate uh, machine learning tax at every stage of workflow so that's why the main key of TensorFlow is an end-to-end -end machine learning pro, uh, um, platform. So you using TensorFlow, you rest assured that you have your model, 
you prepare your model, and you can also deploy your model to use for the end user, right? So you prepare your data, build the ML models, deploy the models, and implement ML ops in the cloud, right? And you can make use of pre-trained models, uh, which is available on TensorFlow Ops. So TensorFlow Ops is a collection of models that has been trained with large data sets. So you can rest assured that those models are efficient. So you can use those models, then build your own model on top of them, with a new layer, and then get uh, a good result. So as I mentioned earlier, it was developed by Google Brain. TensorFlow is used by companies of all sizes to build intelligent application, and it supports Python, Java, and R. So if you're not a Python person, you can use R. If you're not an R person, you can use Java with TensorFlow. All right, so how does it work? So basically, I won't go into detail. So TensorFlow uses a data flow graph to map and represent uh, machine learning models and it uses nodes in the graph to represent operations going on underneath it, and edges to represent the data flow. And um, lastly, it uses a computational graph to uh, execute the machine learning uh, models. All right, so here are the examples of TensorFlow application. Just like any example uh, or any application uh, AI would do, right? Image recognition that has recognizing objects in either in a video or in a picture, in an image, and natural language processing that is understanding, uh, you know, be able to uh, make a chatbot, able to translate, uh, um, you know, languages from different uh, angles, and also speech recognition, able to speak and then recognize uh, the speech. Then recommend that system, recommendation system, which is also one of our sessions that is coming up today you know, recognizing uh, recommendation of stock in, in an e-commerce where, you know, you've seen something where you visited uh, an e-commerce platform. And, uh, you know, for a recommender system, we have two of them. We have personalized and non-personalized, right? So when we're talking about personalized recommender system, you visit an e-commerce, probably you've saved in some of your details, they have some of your data, and you find out they are recommending you to get a gene. <laughs> and in the real sense, you actually need a gene, right? You know, they've used your data to recommend something that you need uh, for you. And also one other very popular, you know, recommender system that we all have um, used. So there was a time we were planning um, something around get together, right? And we're having the chat on Facebook, right? We're, they were having the chat on Facebook, you know, and the discussion came up about, okay, what should we cook? Like, what should we eat on, you know, for the get together? And boom, something pop up on the Google chat, how to make kofada rice. You know, they're they recommending, they've seen something around, you want to cook, you want to do something about eating, and it's recommend, you know, uh, all those things. So that's the recommendation system. And we have medical diagnoses, we've seen, uh, you know, those examples in the real world machine learning being used by medical practitioners and self-driving cars, of course. Tesla driving without, you know, being there. Okay, so um, the core components of uh, TensorFlow, basically there are, are four. So the first one is TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow Core. So this is the one we use to build the model, and train, to build and train the model. Um, and the second one is TensorFlow JS. So, so I don't know if you know we can actually run and build model in the browser. Have you done that before? Do you have any idea? Right. So with TensorFlow JS, you can actually uh, build a model and you know run the model in the browser. I, I wanted to pull up some examples, but uh, I couldn't because. Uh, I, I was unable to get uh, those examples ready for this particular slide. And the third one is uh, TensorFlow Lite, and which happens to be one of my favorites because uh, I've been into mobile development and, and the like. So we want to have machine, we want to have AI in our mobile apps, and uh, we don't want to make use of 
API. So we, want, we don't want to start calling APIs. We want it to work offline. Can we use, can we have an app? So we don't need to connect internet and I will use AI power the application. So with TensorFlow Lite, this can happen. You build your model using TensorFlow Core, you export it as TensorFlow Lite, and you integrate it in your mobile app or platform, Flutter, either native or hybrid, Flutter, uh, Kotlin, any kind of uh, React native. You can embed this, embed uh, TensorFlow Lite, and you have a mobile-powered um, application, right? And one thing about TensorFlow Lite is it doesn't require internet, and it's fast, right? So I will talk about something at the end of the slide about quantization, right? So that's, you know, making, a, uh, trying to optimize TensorFlow Lite model. I'll talk about that later. And TensorFlow FX, so this is uh, TensorFlow for production, and deploying the ten TensorFlow to, uh, to production for cloud use, whereby you serve that model, you serve your model via API. All right. Okay, so quick one. Uh, you know, Google recently had uh, their I.O., I.O. 23, and they had some new features for uh, machine learning, basically for uh, TensorFlow. I will just go through some of, those, uh, uh, some of those features, new features of uh, machine learning. So the first one is Keras CV and Keras NLP. So, but before I move on, Keras is, uh, it's just is the back end of TensorFlow. So initially they were separated, but now Keras, you know, for the I think for the past two years, Keras and TensorFlow are now together. So we can use Keras as if you know in line with because it's now the official back end of uh, uh, of TensorFlow, right? So now what does Keras CV do? So Keras CV is uh, Keras CV and Keras NLP gives you the access to between a uh, state-of-the-art model, right, something that is almost ready for you to, for, for you to use with just a few, uh, few lines of codes. And, you know, you can uh, innovate and, you know, just build few, uh, freely because most of the things, as a machine learning engineer, what we worry about is how to make our model, you know, more efficient. And for us to do that, we need data, right? We need data. And some of these libraries are being trained on large data set, right? So all you need to do is just you know, build your own model on top of it, the layer, and then boom, you are good. So the second, so that's for Keras CV and Keras NLP. So the next, the next one is TensorFlow, the uh, D-Tensor. So, so I will just talk about D-Tensor freely. So it basically is used for uh, scaling up your model and also train them efficiently by uh, combining different techniques, you know, uh, in terms of, uh, of the parallelism techniques together. That's a T, um, D tensor. And the next one is JAX, JAX to TF. So do we have anyone here who knows about JAX or have you used JAX before? Any ML researcher here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've used JAX. Okay, so now let me ask you a question. When you use, your, when you use JAX to build a model as a ML researcher, how do you deploy the model? How do you get the model to use? You know, it's just like the model stays just for research purpose, right? So now with JAX to TF, your model won't just stay. So you will have the ability to deploy that model, you know, to production using JAX to TF, right? So and it's 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 uh it's very it's it, the performance is high you know in terms of uh using the JAX frame and you don't need to to do any conversion of maybe you want to convert your JAX model to TF before you can use it so you can use it in line and it will work uh, perfectly all right so um so and the last one is um TF quantization API so I wanted to talk about um. TF, TensorFlow Lite quantization. So at some point, we add quantization for, for the model. And the reason for that is, you know, when we started building TensorFlow Lite, 
the model was so heavy, you know, because they are running like they're on they're running on the edge locally, and they are heavy, consuming the mobile battery, consuming you know the mobile resources. So we came up with, you know, they come up with quantization. So quantization basically is to reduce the size, you know, of the model, right, so that it can fit perfectly well with with the mobile with the mobile application, but during that process, it's actually reducing the precision, uh, precision, you know, of the of the model. So at the end of the day, you end up having a model that has been deprecated or that that, that has deficient in terms of you know you trying to reduce uh, the size. So now with CF quantization API, that is gone. So you have the ability to you know reduce the model and then maintain the the accuracy, you know, the the efficient of of your model. So this one actually is not out yet. Um, you know, by the end of this year, it's going to be out. So, you know, it happens to be one of my favorite rides because I do more of TensorFlow Lite, uh, you know, uh, uh, and stuff. So, um, basically, that is uh, what I have because of my time. I don't want to go uh, into much of... Uh, okay, so for for the TensorFlow Lite, um, the... Um, the Kera CV, so this Kera CV, so you just, when you have uh, the model, so which you've built before, either for CV or uh, either for, for a classification or you're doing uh, a CV model. So all you need to do is just write the model and build it on top of it and then bring out the out of state life, you know, with just few lines of code. So for this second one, you can see the example, you know, we're using that to photograph of an astronaut riding uh, and boom, you have it. So uh, these are, you know, the powerful, you know, performance uh, this can bring to you. So you can check out, you know, the guides on keras.io slash kerascv and then kerasnlp. So for people interested in computer vision and also natural language processing, it's actually, you know, good, you know, for you to, to check it out. All right. So I think I talked about, so this is, the, uh, this is the parallelism I was talking about, you know, for uh, D-Tensor and... Uh, I don't want to waste most of the time. Let me just skip. All right, so these are the things uh, JAX can be useful for, for inference, uh, fine tuning, and also fusion. Because of time. So this one is coming soon, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, ah, okay, so that's it. So um, at the end, you know, um, as I mentioned earlier for the community uh, summary, so I'm part of uh, TensorFlow Ibada organizer. So it's a TensorFlow user group uh, by Google. So it happens in all cities across the world where you know, we bring, we come together as a community, teach machine learning, not necessarily TensorFlow, machine learning, and you know, how to get better about uh, you know, building your model and the like. So the last, you know, we do have a session every week, most times, more, more than once in, in a week in Ibadan. And for now, we're doing virtual, so you don't need to come to Ibadan to join our session, right? You can join virtually as well. So, um, so let me just share with you what we have in the bag for our session, upcoming session that's TensorFlow Ibadan. So we're looking at having a statistics uh, for machine learning series where we want to see the handshake you know, between statistics and machine learning. So we all know, we all believe that statistics is very important in machine learning, but how do they relate? How can you say, okay, this is what's happening around here for statistics or in this model I'm building, so we want to do uh, that. So we want it to be five series where we call in uh, you know, experts in, in statistics field and they have the industry experience of in building machine learning models uh, you know, to take us through the series of machine learning. So it's going to be five, the series is going to be five classes, bundled, and we are going to be awarding certificate after the session for at least people that attended four out of the, out of the session, right? And the second one is the ML paper reading clubs. So we want to have a great handshake, you know, between the industry and also the academia. So whereby we want to come together to uh, you know, to read paper, uh, to read research paper, and also look at writing as and as a community, while we'll solve uh, 
a local problem which we can push to global, right? And the third one, which uh, makes sense, right, is an end-to-end -end machine learning with, the, with TensorFlow and other machine learning frameworks. So we want to look at building end-to-end -end uh, end -end machine learning products, you know, from preparing your data to building the model and pushing it to, to production. So this also is going to be series, right? And some of the, some of the speakers you've listened to or you've been listening to in this uh, event will also be part of our, our speakers. And for the second one, I've not informed that yet. Our lead will be Dr. Sekina. So well, he's, he's not aware yet. He'll be the lead for this, our second one, MA Paper Reading Club. So, you know, will be guiding us on, uh, you know, reading papers. And we have a bunch, you know, bunch of papers that we want to read through and also see we can, we can implement, you know, write our own paper to solve a problem. All right. So, yeah, that's all. Thank you very much. Yes, I wanted to mention that. I forgot. I skipped it. All right, to join our community, uh, you can go to uh, meetup, meetup.com, search for TensorFlow Ibadan, and join the community. We release newsletter on a weekly basis on what is happening in the ML world, and you get to also, uh, you know, get a notification whenever we want to have uh, an event. As I mentioned earlier, you don't need to come to Ibadan. Uh, you know, you can jump virtually, but maybe one of these days we'll organize, uh, um, you know, a ground, you know, event, which is also going to be physical. So we want everybody in Ibado to come and join us at the session, right? So go to meetup.com, search for TensorFlow Ibado, and then you uh, see us, please, you know, m you know register the, as a member, and we can, you can always receive our notification. Thank you, everyone. All right, so I'm dropping my speaker. So I'm not coming back as an MC. So uh, the next session now is uh, I want to call on. So DSN, Data Science Network uh, representative to come and give us, uh, you know, you present their deck. So please welcome Mr. David. So for those people that are presenting their posters, please, when this session is about to end, kindly reach out to Adeola so that you can you know, have your posters uh, um, you know, pasted. You can follow her now and come back for this session, right? If you have your posters here, so just please follow her to the uh, room. We are going to be having our poster session at room two. Thank you, everyone. All right, good morning, everyone, wait again. I hope you have been enjoying this session so far since yesterday. How has the experience been? All right, yeah, okay. All right, okay, so quickly, I want to introduce you to Data Scientist Network, the, one of the global uh, community that introduced new big, intermediate, and advanced into world of machine learning, data science track, call, just name it. So uh, my slide is done, all right. So quickly, so, uh, Data Scientist Network is an organization that is committed to raising one million AI talent, and we have been doing that in the last five years. And uh, one of the motive behind that is to build a solution that improves the quality of life and well-being of two billion people in the emerging market. So, one of these areas is that we want to make sure that we build a local champion that creates a solution for the local community because Africa can actually solve their uh, their problem better than external people. So Data Scientist Network has been working on delivering both physical online classes, and we have a track record of all of the activities that we have been doing. We have a lot of free content on YouTube where people can learn on data science skill. We have a learning starter for people who are nov novice to data science that can get them starting very well from, the, from learning data science from novice to pro. So we have a lot of books, content that we have done. So you can also check our website for that. But more importantly, Data Science Community is very, uh, is an organization that's keen on ensuring that everybody is included in their learning activities. So we divide our community into about 12 strata. 
to ensure that we capture everybody so that they can be taken along. So we have a campus community for people who are within the campus community, a campus environment, so that they can grow and learn data science key, build capacity, seek opportunity, and be able to have access to free learning, free support, mentorship. We also have a city community for anybody that wants to learn data science. In terms of any aspect of data science, you want to learn machine learning, AI, business analytics, data analytics, having access to mentors. We have a lot of that in our community. So to ensure that people who are outside the school have opportunity to leverage that, we have city community across all the states, across some other t more than 12 African countries. We have ladies in AI community that's focused on including ladies into the AI opportunity so that they can have more representation in the community of data science. And we have kids and teens community as well that you can enroll kids into so that they can begin to grow the capacity of AI when, as they are going up so that they will become a pro before they grow up. So we have AI for school. This particular community is dedicated towards uh, secondary school, focus on just like we, as we have uh, all these club we have in high school. So that's the AI for school. And also we have a community for AI professionals. These are the people that are working. So we tailor all the learning towards each of these categories. For professionals, we know that they need to develop solutions that target to what they are doing. So we have a community of professionals that tailors to that area. And we have a lot of learning content towards that. We have our executive. These are the people who are making decisions in the organization. So they need a top level model, top level overview, summary of things. So we have a community that is tailors towards them. And we have the AI researcher community. So the AI researcher community, they are the people that write research paper, represent, uh, represent us globally. You are going to see a lot of our community who are represent us globally presenting research paper. Some of them are almost here, are also here. We have 14 of them presenting paper today. So we train community to be able to write research from no face to pro. So we have DSN talent, this opportunity for all the people that have been in our community to be able to secure a job. After you have go through our community program, learn end to end, then there is, must be an opportunity for you to get access to jobs. So we create a DSN talent pipeline whereby we bring you in and connect you to job. Then we have a AI startup. A lot of our community members have a startup mindset. We help them, we support them, fund access to mentors, uh, mentorship and w, uh, cloud uh, storage access. So practitioners and tools experts. So just like we have a tensor flow Ibado, we have our community, Pythonistas, and all of kind of all those groups, they are practitioners and two experts. So we have a community of experts of that. So if you are very good in particular to maybe Power BI user, so we have a community tailors to that too, so that you can begin to blend and be able to create solutions in that particular tool, then be able to contribute to model building. Then we have partners and hub. So these partners and hub are the community who, uh, the hub partner who are giving our community access to their facility to learn at their cities. Just like now, we are running a program we call AI in every city. So some of these hub that are partner, they host these community learners in their hub so that they can have access to learning. So as I've said, all those communities that you saw just now, which is about 12 shatter, these are the different learning opportunities that we've created for them. You can see it. We have segments, face-to-face, -face, online, offline, and hands-on. So for people who are in category of beginner, we have AI every day, AI in facial, AI for beginner books are there for them. For people who are in the kids, based on that 12 cardinal point, these are the learning that we tailor towards them. For kids, intermediate to expert, university students, professional c we can see that we have learning that is focused on physical classes. We have one that is online, the one that is offline and handsome for them. So some of the material for the offline, we have we call something AI knowledge box. It's compri uh, comprised of all the learning content of various learning tracks from AI to HML to Deep Learning, Power BI, Tableau, and all of that. So we have it about two, over 25,000 learning content in the hard uh, drive. So we normally give it to our community so that instead of them, save them time to be looking for content online, it save them time to be downloading data, uh, download, using their data and downloading resources. Because these are already compiled resources. So these are a lot, we have a lot of it being distributed. So if you are in any part of our community, you, all, you want to get some of these resources, you can also meet some of my guys or any of the city that you are. You can request for this from the community lead. So across Nigeria, we have all our community. Just search online, LinkedIn, Twitter, any community that you are. Just search DSN, 
and if DSN is bad, and DSN U High, DSN Unilag, anywhere you are in the campus, you can always get DSN community. We also have our presence across uh, it's more than it's more than seven countries now, about ten other countries. We also have our, our presence in some Francophone country, French speaking country. We want to ensure that they are not left behind in the world of AI. So these are the past events that we have run, AI in every city, taking learning to everywhere, so that people we are evangelizing AI to people so that they can begin to leverage all of this so that they can begin to uh, see exploit the opportunity that data science has brought. So these are some of our expert and some project-based visualization masterclass that we did. And we have a lot of sessions like that. These are some of the physical class that we run, where people come on for hands-on. These are the dedicated material uh, book that we call Artificial Intelligence and Python book for elementary students that we, that, that we did, so that it can help kids to learn Python from scratch very easy. And these are the material. We also train teachers. Just as I said earlier on, we have AI professionals. These are the teachers who are professional in that area. So we introduce them to Python with this book so that they can cascade the learning to all these children, all the kids they are teaching their, in their school. So these are DSM Digital Children Day events that we normally run annually. So we also, as a DSM, we don't want the knowledge to be, uh, to be one-sided. We always take learning to far north. This is Bono. We take learning to all the children in Bono. And these are... Uh, all those people that are in display ID camp, we take them, we teach them data science, and a lot of them are now doing amazingly now. So these are different classes that we have run. So you can also be part of the community wherever you are, any states or any campus you are. So we have the same community everywhere. So just talk to any of my colleagues. They will be at this, they will create a stand there so that you can make any inquiry and then you can get out to be part of the community. For the ladies in AI, these are the part of the event that we've run for ladies in AI. So one of the things we also look for in DSN, we have mentored a lot of people. A lot of people have had opportunity to grow with DSN. So now it's now time to give back to the community. If you are proficient in any part of the feed, you can also be part of a DSN giving back community by being a mentor to other people. So we have a link to sign up as a mentor. You can be a mentor by signing up to be a mentor as well. So these are our current mentors. We have local and international mentors, and you can be a mentee as well. So these are our board members. So these are the, a lot of applications that we've deployed. As I've said the other time, we have a lot of research community that travel outside Nigeria to even make a paper presentation. This was uh, Tunisia, in the, uh, in the Tunisia 2022, that we had a get together at Tunisia with our community member that went there to make a research paper presentation. So you can be part of the research paper as well, a research community, so that you can leverage all of this opportunity. So we, as I've said, we have go beyond just Nigeria-based or English country now. We have a lot of Python, uh, Francophone French content that we have uh, exposed all our community to. Always, in every year, we always share our annual learning calendar. So this is one of them. So DSN is not just about training, learning, we are so even powerful in research writing, in academia. So this uh, uh, academia.edu citing, talking to all that, our paper has been cited more than, mentioned more than 10,000 10, times. Even as, as this time around, it's more than even close to 20,000 times, which our research paper has been mentioned. MIT Technology Review also recognized DSM paper that is one of the, uh, is one based on its prominence in the research area, uh, domain. So we also present paper academic research work with global international organizations like ICML, ICLR, Deep Learning, Daba, and Hall. So being part of the DSN research team is one of the good things for you to start up as a enthusiast researchers. So we have, we, you can hone your skill with our research skill expert. So these are part of our researchers. So and I'm happy to tell you that one of the people that are our research skill leader, who is the mentor in the community we have, uh, Dr. Sakina at Florence, so, yeah, so you can also meet her if you are a lady, to be part of the ladies in AI with her. So we have a lot of paper. You can also look at some of our paper that we've published online by searching DSN research paper on Google. You see a lot of those resources. So these are the awards that we have won. We've won Best Poster separately in most of the conference that we have we've attended. Even the German Institute of Labor Economics also recognized DSN as number two, uh, the number, one of the center uh, Africa ahead of many African universities. If you look at the chart there, 
they recognize DSN as second in the ranking of which educational and research institution in Africa will you consider to be the leading institution in AI? So to, for you to see how prominent we are, these are ahead of other main universities in Africa. So we won the X Prize Award as well. So a lot of things, we, we build product as well, and we partner with a lot of organizations to build solutions. We work with Meta, TikTok, Flowminder to create a solution tailored to Africa and also to solve Africa problem. So these are different organizations that we have been working with. We also have a lot of uh, our product also. Our product also won a, a global top 100 product using the, during the UNESCO IRCA ranking. So we built a product uh, about a year ago talking to uh, EdTech Adaptive Learning Engine that, uh, that look at the student learning and be able to, uh, when this particular product, what, the, what it does is that when students in a class, they, they assimilate differently and when they want to approach exam or test, they respond differently. So we tailored a, a response model that actually help the students to understand better and be able to perform very well when they are writing exam. So not only we, we also create a solution for the, for the, uh, for the country. We build a population dynamic of Nigeria dashboard that also actually solve financial problem. Like this financial inclusion dashboard that we build for Nigeria. So this is, it shows how financial inclined we are in Nigeria. So we have a lot of this opportunity. Also, you can also have opportunities to be part of our boot camp. So uh, there is opportunity currently going on with DSN. You can be part of our community, join any of our community, we use any of this link, you can meet my colleagues. We have internship posts that is going on currently. You can, be, you can join our six month internship opportunity. The registration is going on now. So you can register, just go to data science nigeria.org, G-O-A-N-N-P, so you can be part of that. So we have a responsible AI master class going, that we are going to be hosting at Microsoft Office. So you can join, so the flyer of that is here. So you can go to our Twitter page or LinkedIn to read more about some of this information. So these are the other organizations that we work with. So this is just about DSN in brief. So you can also meet my colleagues, any of, uh, you see them putting on the, the DSN t-shirt to make more inquiry about us. So thank you very much. So I will be taking your question after this. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. David, uh, for that. Uh, so um, thank you, everyone. So I want to use uh, this opportunity to recognize Vice Chancellor of uh, Thomas Adome University, uh, Professor Francisca, is among uh, us this morning. Thank you for joining us, Ma. And thanks for the hospitality. You know, something happened this morning, Ma. I came to the podium and I was saying good morning to people. They did not answer. I asked them why. They said they are full because of the breakfast. Thank you very much for the food. <laughs> All right. So um, now, as I mentioned earlier, today is part, you know, with a lot of sessions just like yesterday. And uh, now we are going to a breakout session. So the breakout sessions uh, is more of today. So by the time we're coming back, right, to this main uh, uh, podium, that will be, you know, after we've gone for lunch, then we've checked the poster uh, session. That was going to be parallel lunch poster session here, and also come back for the poster uh, winner and also the Akaton winner. So now, so the first session that will be happening in this room is uh, applying data frameworks to curriculum assessment and digital learning in Nigeria by Ishola Adebayo is happening here in this room. And in room two, we have a comparative model of classification algorithm with principal component analysis for IDCSD happening in room two. And room three, we have understanding of ABC of data analytics and visuals. We also, in the same room, we also have managing and promoting AI communities on campus, catch them young approach in building solutions by Rashid uh, Modassil. The first one will be taken by, uh, will be taken by um, Israel or Dajo. The second session is big data analytics happening in this room by Banjoko Alabi. And in room two, 
we have the continuation of Stephen Kola Wally's session for people that attended his session yesterday. He is going to be taking us through the collab session of, uh, of the session yesterday, uh, happening in second room. Because his session is not for so long, another session will come up immediately after his session, and that's hypertension prediction using a symbol leaden classifier by Tunike Oladeli and others in room two. And in room three, we have getting started with Python for machine learning by Istra Odeajo. Now the last session for a uh, breakout session, in room one here, we have building a production ready recommendation system by Olawale Abimbola. And in room two, we have sufficient dimension reduction with information complexity by Dr. Kabir Olaliri. That's room two. Olaliri, sorry about that. Olaliri, Dr. Kabir Olaliri is happening in room two, the last session uh, for breakout. And the third one is interpreting machine learning models a hands-on exploration of model explainability in Python by Abidin Belo in the third room. And that's the last session. So after that session, then we'll call for poster presentation. We'll go to room two to check posters of, uh, of the presenters. And after that, we'll go for lunch, right? So when you're done, you go for lunch. When you're done, we we'll go for lunch. You'll come back here for uh, Akaton winner, announcement and also the winner for the uh, poster presentation. Thank you everyone and uh, you can check the website to follow the schedule you know to see the session we would like to go for is on our website github in the bar xng.github.io slash schedule.html. Thank you everyone enjoy the session. Please, uh, kindly wait behind, please. Don't go yet, please. Uh, the Vice Chancellor has a very... Uh, uh, so thank you very much. Um, and information is reaching me uh, now that... Um, uh, so after the announcement of the Akaton, we then have a panel session and also women in AI, right? It's a uh, you know it's it's a yearly thing for for Indaba. We always have women in AI, and after that session, we should all still wait behind. We still have uh, you know the vice chancellor has a very an important information to pass across to us. So after the announcement, please wait, wait behind. Don't travel yet for our vice chancellor to address us and give pass uh, that information across so never can tell you don't know what the information is all about you don't know if uh, you know he's giving us something that will sky out there, you know right so just please wait behind uh, for the information thank you everyone uh, for waiting behind you can now go for the breakout session
It's not about it's not about how you post me.
All right. So I, um, I have one. So I want to believe we are all here for um, applying data frameworks to curriculum assessment and data learning in Nigeria. Right. That's what we are saying in this room. But uh, we're going to be rescheduling this uh, this session. Then we'll be having recommender system by um, Olawale in this room. All right. You ab happening? Yeah. Recommender system here. Yes. Now. Yeah, and it's a, it's a lab session, it's an hands-on uh, um, session. So please wait behind for the for the session. Thank you.
Hi everyone. Hello. Hi, good morning. Yeah, my name is Olawale Abimbola. Um, I'm here to talk about recommendation systems. Uh, um, okay, uh, I will just dive into it. Okay, just like I say, my name is Olawale Abimbola. Um, I'm a machine learning engineer. I work with creative advanced technology in um, Dubai, UAE. Um, my work is around machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, um, recommendation systems, um, expert systems in general, let me put it that way. Um, I love research. I'm also a researcher. I love collaborations. Um, I love working with people in writing research papers, and I have a couple of research published papers. Um, if you want to know more about me, that's my um, profile, my portfolio, my LinkedIn, and my Twitter. So um, we'll talk about recommendation systems, what exactly um, recommendation systems are. Um, I'll talk about the types. Um, I'll give a brief description about um, what content-based filtering is as um, a recommendation system. I'll give a brief description of um, collaborative filtering in terms of item-based recommendation. I'll talk about market basket. Um, I should probably talk about user base too. And I also have an hands-on um, which I will share and we'll walk through together. So I'll share the link, you can access the link, we can run the code together. It's all about um, fashion recommendation. Um, let me put it this way, when you, um, for example, you saw my shirt and you love it, and you were wondering, okay, ah, how could I got it? How could I get this type of shirt? And you just take a picture of mine, of my shirt, you uploaded it in probably I don't know if Jumia does it, but I don't think Jumia does it, but I think AliExpress does something like that. So you upload the picture, it search their database based on the model and give you a kind of recommendation as regards that. So those are the kind of things we'll be doing today. Are we excited? <laughs> um, okay, so what is recommendation system? Um, I, I don't know, okay. Has anyone heard about recommendation system before? Yeah, recommendation system. It's majorly for computer to be able to give you recommendation based on a particular set, um, product you you are interested in or group of products. And it might not be products alone, it might be music. For example, if you use Spotify very well, you might have listened to a music for a period of time. Spotify algorithm, recommendation system algorithm, we generate um, some kind of um, algorithm, which is a personalized algorithm for you. Every person that is on Spotify has a unique algorithm, which is a personalized algorithm, which is based on the type of music you've been listening to. So as time goes on, they will improve on those algorithms based on the new trend of music you are listening to. And that is how recommendation systems work. And everything you see about recommendation, you've seen a lot about recommendation system, you might not just know that it's a recommendation system. For example, your Jumia, when you select a product, at the beginning, at the, at the, at the next step, or next, um, towards the down, you will see a um, list of other listed recommendation um, products. For example, I select a shirt, it will list some other shirts, towards the down, you, um, those shirts are kind of related to the shirt I've selected. You just want to give me a kind of wide variety to select the kind of shirts I want so that I will not just stick with this. I might see something else that I like. So that is one example and that example is just an item based recommendation. So um, in streaming services, Netflix, it shows personalized um, recommendations for you when you go to Netflix. It is based on the data it's been gathering, the, 
kind of movie you watch and all those things. So that is basically, okay, let me use TikTok also as an example. Those ones to a um, kind of um, personalized recommendation system that collects your data, the kind of um, short videos you watch, and some other things like that. So um, recommendation system itself is just divided into major three, like three. We have the content-based filtering, we have um, the collaborative filtering, and we have the hybrid. The hybrid is not that serious. It's just merging different kind of recommendation systems. Um, it's just merging probably those two, or the two in the collaborative filtering together to form an hybrid to make, is probably always used to improve the model, the hybrid. So, um, okay. Yeah, the content-based filtering. I gave an example of um, you going to Jinnia and selecting a shirt, and at the end of the day, the shirt um, will give you some other lines of recommendation. That is content-based um, filtering. So it is based on your view. You select, you go to, um, you go to, um, what is the name? You go to um, Netflix, you select a video, at the end of the day, it will still give you some other recommendation. Those are based on the product itself. It's based on the product. It's not based on any other ideology or it's based on the product. So it's products that are similar, similar products. That is what content-based filtering is. Then, okay, this is a very good example of content-based filtering. You select a shirt, it gives you a series of shirts. Then, okay, this is another one, content-based filtering. You select its television, it gave you different types of um, television varieties so that you'll be able to select a better one. Maybe the one you've selected is not even good. Then the collaborative filtering. The collaborative filtering does not consider the product only. It, con it considers your own thoughts too because in as much you are browsing or you are using a particular e-commerce or any product, maybe not e-commerce, maybe TikTok or Facebook, your, your, your interaction with the system is being captured. The kind of pictures you like on Facebook, the kind of um, um, videos you watch, the kind of um, the kind of videos you watch, the kind of if you even watch that particular video from end start to finish, and all those things, they are being considered when it comes to recommendation systems too, because they gather all this information to create personalized information for you. So, you, um, for example, this particular example that I'm trying to show you. Here, is about um, different types of drug, breeds of drugs. So if you are, if you like um, any of this dog, there is high probability you should like this other one. But I don't know um, breeds of dog. I will have gave example based on the um, breeds. So that is just what it is. Then the user-based collaborative filtering. A very good example of this is your TikTok. Because your TikTok is strictly personalized. You can go to my TikTok and be seeing stuff around football or AI. And I might be in another person's TikTok and I'll be seeing movies, dramas, and stuff like that. So it is very, very personalized. And what they have done was they've um, used, um, as for user base, they've used. Um, interactions of other people to judge yours. So for example, I'm using this as an example. Let's um, assume that this is a market and um, Jake, he got basketball, sunglasses and flip-flop. The other person, Fumi, got um, bikini and flip-flop and Nike or Nike or whatever, got um, basket, um, beach ball um, sunglasses and flip-flop while Johanna got only slippers or flip-flop. The recommendation system will look at the interactions of um, other people 
who has got it? Oh, sorry. To look at the interaction of other people who has gotten um who has gotten flip flop to make recommendations for you. So it is likely for Joanna to get a recommendation of sunglasses, um, sunglasses, beach ball, and even bikini. So that is how user base work. It is more of personalization. And this is not only um, the, um, the end about user base. There are some other things they look like, like what um, product you rate, what product you liked, the ones you bought before, maybe they, they, they thought, okay, you might have used it and they might give you some new recommendations of something better than that and stuff like that. That is what user base does. Then market basket, this is a very interesting one. Market basket is another type of collaborative filtering. It looks at a lot of things. But a very good example of this will be when you go to ShopRite. You will see, or a mall, let me put it that way, you will see that most of these products, the ones that you will use with it are always beside it. That is a strategy for you to get it together. For example, if you are going to get cereal, you are definitely need dim milk, something like that. And if you need milk, you might probably need egg. Where I get my groceries and my stuff, um, the, 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 the shelf where bread is, there is egg on that. Because I will probably need egg with my bread. So that is market basket. And when it comes to the e-commerce side, you will see it on your cart page when you want to check out. They will ask you something, you will see something like, um, hope you've not forgotten something. People who got this also got this together with it, stuff like that. Those are um, market basket analysis. And it is used based on a popular uh, model called Apari algorithm. So this is an example, a very good example of market basket. This is me on Amazon. I selected a product which is an um, headset and I'm about to check out. It's recommended PS for me. It's recommending cables. It's recommending PS5 and all these things I can use with my headset. It's recommending items that goes along with it. Probably I might want to get. This is another example which is um, which is um, a keyboard but if you look at it, it's also recommending CDs and mouse and some other things which might go with the keyboard and I might be interested and want to get. So um, those are the major areas around um, recommendation systems. Uh, we, we, we also have some which I did not talk about, maybe fashion recommender. I don't know if Junior does not do it. I don't think Konga does it. But some e-commerce, when you select a shirt, it might definitely recommend shirts, um, maybe singlets, maybe eyeglasses, maybe shoes that you can pair along with it. So th th those are kind of fashion recommendations. But it comes together, it comes down back to um, you, um, collaborative filtering. We have different types of recommendations. It might be... Um, it might be short videos too, just like your TikTok, where we have a lot of things going down around there. But um, let's switch to um, the demo part. I'll just leave this here for a while for you to have the direct link to um, the collaboratory notebook we'll be using. I, I think it will be very, very good um, if you can use your PC because it will be, though it will work on phone perfectly. But um, I think a PC will have a you will have a better experience with you using your PC. And if you don't have an access, you can just let me know. Do I think? Oh, sorry. I'm not sure. So I'll wait, I'll wait for like a few minutes so that we can start for us to be able to have access to the link and um,
So let me give you a brief of what we are doing with this. Um, we are trying to um, use a computer vision um, model. Um, it's a pre-trained model built with TensorFlow, just like Ibrahim explained TensorFlow for us um, a few minutes ago. Um, um, I'm using um, VGG16, if I could remember, that's what I used. Um, I am using it to extract features from images and to create um, an embedding such that I'll be able to, um, uh, after creating the embedding, I, um, I use KNRS neighbors to get the perfect similarity between any input you send to the embedding and the input, the features that are already on ground. So it creates a kind of um, embedding in such a way that you'll be able to fetch similar images based on what you put in it. Okay, I'll I'll ask. Are we are we are we all connected now? Okay, um, I'll wait because it's, it should be more of hands-on. Wow. I think we were given a password yesterday. I'm not sure if it's still going. Okay, um, should I start now? Okay, I think somebody is, okay, I don't think this is my screen, but we can actually do it from here. I th Sorry? The URL. Oh. Sorry, can you please share the URL again? Um, I, I, I'm not controlling this again. I think it's going to control from there. Bit.ly slash 3P, capital P, 7HT, capital X, capital G. Small C, capital X, capital G. Okay, are we all in? Okay. We have three capital P, seven H T. Yes, then T is more capital X. Yes. Perfect. Yes. So this is um I, I don't know if everybody has um experience with um Jupyter Notebook or this is Google Collab. Yeah, you can also connect with your phone actually, but um though the experience might not be very good, but you can still do what we are doing. That, the, the, um, this is um, a product by um, Google. If you have a Google account, you already has it. You already have it. So everybody has the link. I'm going to close this and share. Okay. 
Alright. So I'll wait for just two minutes and I will start. Okay, so I'll close this. Then I will probably share another screen. Just a minute. Uh, um, okay. If you can see, I, I believe you are seeing um, the same thing as me, right? From your hand, are you seeing the same thing? Okay, perfect. So um, for those that don't have experience with um, running this, um, you can, you, you, if you see my mouse, uh, my cursor, you see it's on a kind of play button at the extreme left. So you can click on that to run the first line. So it is by it is cell by cell. As you run the first one, it runs the chunk of code. You scroll down, you run the second one, and like that, like that. So this one, this part is where I was importing the necessary libraries that I need for the task. Um, okay, I'm going to run that. Um, he's saying this because this is not actually the account I used to create it. I'm the sole owner of this um, document, of this, uh, of this um, code. So you can make a copy, it will go directly to your drive, and that one will be your own copy. And you can make use of that. Or, and if you want to run it like that, you will run it, you make changes, but it will not have effect on my own um, code. So you can do any one you like. So uh, the first, that is the first thing. The second one is the data set. Actually, this data set is very, very large, but I did some pre-processing to reduce the number of data sets that I will use for this presentation. I'll show you where you can improve on it, where you can make the data sets more, such that the model will be improved, something like that. But for this place, um, this is um, where I put the data. I clone the data from um, Cargo. It's an open source data. And I pull it to my drive, but that's the code so that everybody could have access to it. So I'll run this chunk now. So by running it, it will put the data. You can see the data is about 590 something MB, but it is not using your personal data. It is using Google Cloud, so you will see that it is very, very fast. It is using Google, the, all these things are on Google server, so it will be very, very fast. It's not using your, it's not like it's downloading 500 or something megabyte on your PC. Then I won't zip it because this particular um, um, file that I've just downloaded is a zip file. You can see it's populating it with the names of the images. Um, it might take a few minutes, if I'm not mistaken. 
Okay, this line of code, I, I actually put it here for us to have a view of probably few 10 or few 20, random 20, of some of the images that we are working with. So this is the first. Okay, that's just a function. Um, yeah, I'm running the function now. So you can see these are some of the fashion accessories that we have in the email uh, in the folder these are some of the fashion accessories um, these are some other ones examples of fashion accessories that we have then the the data itself came with a particular csv which contains the information about each of those images though um the reason i imported it i did not need it for building my embedding the reason I imported it is for me to do a kind of processing such, such that I'll reduce the number of data sets. I just selected some few ac um, article types so that I'll be able to use just probably shared gene and watch to do the demonstration. Then if you want to improve on it, you can add the rest. So if you can see, this is the... Um, there's a lot of um, article types that is in that image. The image is about 44,000, so it's kind of very much. But I selected few, which I think are probably necessary for now, from the article type, though they are still very much, so I had to, um, had to do some things that could um, help me reduce. I'm coming, I'm going to show you that part. Sorry, are you running it with me the way I'm... Oh. Oh. Okay, I'm I think I'm using my personal network. <laughs> okay, no problem, sir. Uh, okay, I'll just wait and explain what I did here. So I, I'm trying to do um, the mapping of um, the image with the CSV file that came with the image. So that I'll be able to reduce it and be able to select few images. And to, to make it very easy for us, I wrote, um, I commented on the codes. I wrote what each function is doing. Any, everything, every line of code, there is, um, there is um, a description of what each of the functions are doing. I'll just wait for a minute for you to get to where I am. So I guess I'll, I'll have to move on. Sorry? Oh, I, probably because I, 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 I do not, um, the way I wrote the code, it is line by line and um, I did not import it from the top. You understand? So even if I want to clean the code up, I'll just remove the normal other ones. It does not affect anything. So um, I'm going to run this, and this will generate a folder for me. Oh, not this part. This is just still mapping. Okay, this is where the um, this is where um, the um, this is where I I did the reduction. So for all the old data frame. I selected 300 from each category of the um, listed um, required articles that I want. So I selected shirts, jeans, watches, track pants, um, sports shoes, and some other things like that, so that I'll be able to um, make use of that instead of using the whole article. And I wrote my code in such a way that it will fetch um, just 300 for each article and those articles that does not have up to 300, it will take everything and leave every other thing there. 
So it will do that. I believe if you run your part of the code, it will do that. All these are just warnings from pandas. This is not something to worry about. Then I will have my new data, which is what I will use now for my modeling. I'll wait for everyone to get to this piece so that I'll continue with the next part. I'll wait for a few minutes so that we can continue. Please let me know if you have gotten to where I am. If you have run the last line of code. Um, this particular one, I should have removed it. This um, importing the drive from Google Colab. Please don't run it because it will redirect you to somewhere. I'm supposed to remove it. I, I did not keep a clean code. You might not run it. Please, I, I just want to see few people that has gotten to where I am then. Sorry? So you are here, sir, right? Okay. I'll wait for other people to let me know if they have gotten to where I am. You've gotten there? Okay, perfect. Sir? Oh, let me go back there. Because I did not, I think we are using the same screen. I'll go back there, sir. I think this is the place. And I select 300. Less than 300. N is equals to 300. Did you see, sir? I'm coming. I'll come and check that. I'm aware some people are having network issue. I'll just wait a few minutes so that we can see where we are. Okay, uh, I think I'm through with this part. I'm at the part where we start our model in initialization. Where I did my feature extraction. And here, what I did was just to leverage on um, um, TensorFlow. I imported ResNet, ResNet 50, which is a transfer learning model. And what it means by transfer learning, um, Google has built it on an open source image. I think it's ImageNet, if I'm not mistaken. It is ImageNet, okay. ImageNet is a series of data sets of different classes, dog, cat, and different objects that was, be, that, was, um, that, was, that was combined together and made open source for deep learning models and computer vision models. So they built a series of models with that ImageNet and they compared the performance. We have a lot of deep learning models. 
Um, we have ResNet, we have VGG16, we have a lot of them. If you look at um, TensorFlow um, Model Hub, you see a lot of these models. And they are, um, the way they perform, it differs from each other. Architecture, it depends on how large the model is and stuff like that. But I, I just picked this as an example. I might use this particular um, model. I might use another model and it will perform better. So I'm going to initialize the model. And here it's downloading the model weights. It's not actually downloading it in your PC. It's still on the Google, Google account. And here, this is where I um, extracted the features. Oh, no, this is not where I extracted. I am trying to map the, um, the direct link to the images so that I'll be able to use this for prediction. Okay. Coming. The input shape, actually, um, what it does is any image you bring in, because this is based on TensorFlow cons configuration, any image you, you bring in, it will reduce it to this size. That's what it's doing. It will actually reduce it to this size and do its own. Um, and I'm not sure you, if you are familiar with computer vision, you know after reducing it, it converts it to an array or a matrix so that it will be able to work with it. So that's what it does. And here are the parameters of um, the model. Then here, um, this image, this one, is mapping um, the image that you've downloaded in your in your drive is mapping it together with it and i'm coming i'm going to scroll down okay i'm here so this function is for extraction of features i um I'll, i'm going to initialize it now because I think it takes like five minutes to work to extract the features. I actually had to increase it to 300 images per category because I want a better result actually. I used 150 before. So here the, um, the, last, the first time I ran it, it took around five minutes. So it's going to take I think probably that time. All the ones that I seen here is, yeah, five minutes. And in five minutes, we we'll have our loaded weights, and we can use this weight to make prediction. And that prediction, based on the articles I've said I, um, which I've said I've selected, you can download probably a shirt from Google or shoes or anything, and you put it there yourself. And you'll see how the recommendation system works. I think it's 12 percent now. Um, it will soon get to 100. Yes. And the link is available. I'm not going to delete the link. Um, you can make use of the link. You can make a copy in your drive so that you, anytime you log into your Google Drive, you will always see it there. Okay, I, I'll do that immediately. I'm done with, um, with the class before I leave. It's on 21%. I think in a few minutes time we should be okay. Okay. So.
we still have a few more minutes. I just, and this is just 4,000. The whole of the image is 44,000. But I had to just make sure it is around 4,000 4, so that we will be able to see a good result, at least for now. Then if you, if you like to improve on it, you can increase the 300 that I wrote in the other function I showed you before. You can increase it to um, whatever number you like up to so that you can see a better result. But mind you, if you are increasing those um, numbers, this thing might take four, five, six hours before the features might extract. You need higher resources because we are dealing with computer vision, we are dealing with image, and it requires a lot of computation power. And this kind of thing, trust me, I can't run it on my PC because my PC does not have GPU. And if I run it on my PC, it will wear my processor down. So better you run it on cloud. Google has been good to us to give us free GPU even for some hours. So it will, it will really make sense if you use the GPU, the Google Colab. Yeah, 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 it is possible actually. Though um, if you use the free version of Google Colab, it's, it's my stop because there is a time given for each user to use with the um, the collab. But if you increase, if you if you buy the pro version, there is a pro version that is around nine, I think nine nine dollars, nine point something do dollars. That one is that one is um, you you will be able to make use of higher processor. And there is another one of I think ninety nine dollars. That one you can start training your model, go to sleep, impact your system to still keep training. Then when you get there, you continue from where you stop. Like it trains till you finish. If you want to go on millions of epochs, it will train. Then when you go back there, when you open your um, open the notebook, it you will see it's still training. So it depends on how you need the I, uh, it's almost done. It's on 80 something. I really don't want my. Okay. My mic. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, ninety three percent. We are almost there. Okay, it's almost done. features has been extracted and we have um, weight but um, this line of code that I commented on I, I don't want to run it because um, I'm telling it to save to my drive to save the weight to my drive I don't really need it I don't really need it so that's why I left it like that then here this function is just for us to make inference like um, I'm trying to leverage on nearest neighbor to be able to select the distance between the new image I'm bringing in and the features that I have on ground. So this will help me select the similar image to the one I'm imputing. Um, so um, this is what I will do. Okay, I will, I will run this first. Okay. The input image now is the issue. You can go on Google. If, if you are at this stage, you can go on Google and search for shoes or t shirts or shirt. Download it on your PC. Then I'll teach you how to import it in. 
so that we don't use image reviews to create the features to um so you can just download any image just one so that we can test i have one already on my pc i will just import it in so if you downloaded your image you come to this side which is the folder part and you can click here you will see upload image you can see upload to the session storage if you click on it it will direct you to your folder and you can import any image you want i think i have few in my downloads okay okay I'll, I'll do that shortly i'm going to select this yes and i'll click on open perfect so sir um if you want to do that you will come to this place this place under files you will see an icon that uploads under files you will see an icon uploads so you uh, if you click on it it will take you directly to your to your file sorry has anybody do, done that okay you are in nice okay I, le, okay maybe i should wait because i want someone else to try it and see how it works you can also try it at home it's something that is cool okay yes i i put uh, there was a line of code here i wrote but i commented on it because i really don't need to save it for myself i i'm just using it for but if you want to save it that's just it you just uncomment it then it creates a folder and save directly to um your google drive sorry extreme right extreme left yes no not on the fire under the fire Okay, I think uh, if you've uploaded yours, this is my own image, the direct image, I have it here. I can just dry click and copy the direct parts to the image. And if I copy my direct part, I can come down, I can come down here. To where I have written this one. Okay. I will edit it and in the quotes I will paste I'll paste the part of the new image which I have imported. Were you able to do that? If you if you are here please let me know so that we can continue
So for me, this is the image I inputted, which the model has not seen before. It has not seen it at all before. So, for example, I just assume I saw this shirt on someone and I want to find where to buy it online. So I'll just snap it, upload it to the platform, and based on what I've uploaded, the model will predict the ones they have in their own platform, in the platform. So that's just how it works. If you work with AliExpress very well, I might see something I like. I saw, okay, for example, I saw a bag online, which I, I really love the bag, so I uploaded it on AliExpress, and I was able to see um, it, um, the bag on AliExpress, and I bought it. So it's just something like that. It's a recommendation system based on the image you inputted. So I'm going to run the last function. This last function, the purpose is just for it to go through the image and um, go through the features and from the one in the, the, the one in the database, fetch the required one that looks like this. So it might not really be very, very accurate because we trade a few images, but at least it will still guess. You can see, okay. Sorry, I'm coming. So you can not only upload shirts, you can upload something else because I have a list of things I selected there. I, sele um, I selected shoes, I selected some other things. So, and actually if to say this model is properly trained and is not for tutorial purpose and I use the required image, I will, I will get a lot of black shirts and not this color, because it is black I want. But for it to be able to at least give me something like that very few images, at least it's still something very good. Hi. Two images. Okay, if you upload two images, Yes, that's, that's how it's 
at the post, at the top, you will see um, a list where I gave um, where I gave for all the required things that the um, the model needs to receive them. So if you download anything outside the model, maybe on Google or anywhere, and you brought it in, the, uh, you bring um, you, you bring book inside the post, it will get it will make. Uh, Um, this is the end of the class. This is all I have. Um, you can improve. We can actually improve of the, on this. Um, we can increase the number of images and all this. Yes, sir. Yes. Actually, the deployment is another stage, and we might not be able to do it now. But if I want to deploy it, um, it depends on what I want to use it for. I actually wanted to do more on before this. Before now, I wanted to do um, something on um, user-based recommendation that is not even related to this. But I want the class to be more interactive. You understand? That was why I did this. And if we want to deploy, we will just need to download the weights, put it in our PC, and. Um, who we'll, we'll create an API for it. So um, the API is just like an intermediary between the model and the, so the API is just for you to upload the image, just an interface, you upload the image, and the image takes, the API will take the model, send it to the model, yes, something like an interface, that's what it should be. But he, I, I, I think there are a lot of um, open source that we can use Streamlit for it. Streamlit is something that is very fast that we can use, even for our projects that we can quickly do and just preview our images. Yeah. It's yes, TensorFlow Lite is another thing you can use. TensorFlow Lite is another thing, a very, very good thing. For example, if I want to deploy this in a mobile, app tensorflow light is the best i'll just download the weight in for in tensorflow light cf light then i'll send it to the developer developer knows what to do and if they create a mobile app around it and you snap a picture with the app it will definitely bring out this yes ma the model the model is being evaluated based on distance there is a part in the code I did not mention. Let me let me go back there. You know, I was talking about nearest neighbor. Some people, if they want this, they will use cosine similarity or distance. So the distance is between zero and one. So the nearest it is to um, the nearest it is to the model. Okay, the nearest it will calculate the distance between the input image and all the images in the database. After calculating the distance, it will now select the IS10. That was what I did here. Uh, if you can see, the nearest neighbor has already been. And I chose 10 because I wanted to select the IS10. And there is a part there I'm coming. You can see if you check that part, you will see distance, comma, indices. Did you see it in the function? But I actually returned only indices in the index. I did not return the distance from the function, and that is why we have only index. But if I'm, if it's probably for research purpose, I might return the index and just call out the index and the distance. Sorry. I might return the, in the, the distance with the index, then compare the output image which I'm co comparing with for benchmarking and do the comparison of the distance. Okay, so yes, sir. Hola, Wale. Hola, Wale. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Actually, it's just the reason, the reason I use the care 
learning is just to calculate the distance. I'm not using it like a real model it's just for calculating the distance. And based on uh, based on um, experience and based on that uh, CNN performs better than all these other refined similarity and yes, uh, I've, I've made use of it very well and I I I use it for you want to try for science analysis. The purpose of it is just to calculate the distance between the input image you are bringing and all the images in the database. So if you calculate and check the one that is closer to the highest, then select the best one based on the number of n or numbers of uh, values you want to plot. So that's just what we do. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, it can be different. Yes. Thank you everyone for the session. Uh, yeah. So the next session coming up now is um, we have yeah the continuation of organ. Yeah. So thank you. So we are connect with. Uh, your laptop. Okay, for a while, you can stay there for a while. All right, so, um, the next session coming up now is uh, in this room, in this room, we are having one second, please. seconds my internet went off let me just use a So, um, yeah, in this room, we are having a session from Banjo Kualabi, and the topic is uh, a sequential based optimization algorithm for, eff if for efficient feature selection and classification in big data analysis. So the big data I announced earlier, uh, earlier so this is the session. So it's happening here, and uh, in room two, we have the continuation of Hogging Face by Kola Wally Steven in room two. 
So we are for that session, you can start going to room two now. So after call our list session, immediately after call our list session, which is about 20 minutes, so we have another session immediately. That's hypertension prediction using assembled learning classifier by Tinoke Oladele. She is there. I think she is ready for the session. So we are for organ phase. Please start moving to room two. And if you are, I want to stay for, we want to stay for the big data analysis by Banjo Kalabi. We can stay here. Thank you, everyone. So, Mr. Banjo Kalabi, you can come on. All right. So, yeah, is that Dr. Banjo Kalabi? Sorry about that. Okay, um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Banjoko Walabi. I work in the Department of Statistics, University of Milan. That tells you I'm uh, an academic. Uh, unfortunately, this is my first time presenting a conference paper at Indaba X conference. So as an academic, I want to uh, you to pardon me if I'm too more of academic. Though I'm going to play it down very well. But uh, mine is a presentation, so it's not going to be an add-on. It's going to be a presentation regarding one aspect of big data analysis. Media team. Okay, um, one aspect of big data analysis, and I call it the sequential based optimization algorithm for efficient feature selection and classification in big data analysis. Okay, uh, we'll be guided by this outline. You can see introduction, the objective of the study, the materials and method, analysis and results, and conclusion. Uh, if I should ask anybody in this hall now that what picture do we have on the slide, probably will have a correct answer. It's what? Ma? A tree. Can you define a tree? Yeah, define a tree. Can you define a tree? Most likely, if you ask individual to define a tree, we will, have, we will not have a, unique or a conclusive answer. Will have different answer. But is there a tree on this slide? How do you know there's a tree on this slide? And that is the concept of machine learning. We learn from data. We are trying to build an algorithm that can learn from data. And this is the concept of how we learn. In fact, the commonly used fingerprint we use on our phones goes by this uh, learning method. You put your, finger, uh, your fingerprint on the scanner, it performs some function. It performs a function and it tells you if, yes, you are the right person or you are an intruder. In the concept of big data analysis, I want to be going by my own domain, which we refer to as statistics. In the statistical parlance, when we say big data, big in the sense that we have the number of predictors Predictors means those uh, variables, those factors you want to consider because you can make your prediction. The number of predictors are largely more or are far more than the number of observations. And that is why uh, when you define big data, it is usually in the context of 
I think five Vs, velocity, volume, variance, and so on and so forth. I can't remember now. So we are having so many predictors, covariates, or what you call independent variable to some uh, uh, coming up statisticians. But we have less number of individuals or observations. Definitely, the traditional statistical methods will not work. It breaks down. And that is why you see, you see, the data consists of thousands of genes. An example of big data that we have in the field of statistical genomics and uh, compu computational biology is the microarray data, whereby uh, we have gene expressions. They were collected using the microarray technology. And you know, for a single individual, for an, for an individual, there are thousands of genes. These thousands of genes have been expressed and they have been measured on the medical values. And from there, you can be able to classify an individual based on their cancer status. Either somebody is having cancer or not having cancer. As we will see along the presentation where we apply this method. So you have six features here with just three, ob three observations. Definitely, we cannot have the traditional statistical method to be applicable here. So what do we do? Uh, I've, say, I've, talk, I've talked about this. One way to circumvent this problem is to do what we refer to as feature selection. Among the predictors that we have, several thousands of them, not all of them are actually responsible for that class, which we are classifying individual. Not all of them. An example is this. If you are sick and you go to the hospital, the medical doctor will diagnose you, ask some question, perform a uh, test, maybe RDT or whatever test, and at the end of the day, you'll be classified maybe to be having malaria or not having malaria. But in Hull, you might be having fever, and at the end of the day, you are not having malaria. So malaria is not a biomarker to you what having fever. So in that context, when we have several thousands of genes in a gene microarray data, not all these genes are responsible for that cancer tumor status of individual, then we need to select those ones that are important. That, can now, that you can now use in your model. If you put, select those ones, put in your model, then your model cannot give you accurate prediction. Okay? So we have different types of biomarkers, like I said earlier. Biomarkers are just those measurable indicators of the state of the body. Okay. We have different methods of selecting biomarkers method, the wrapper method, embedded hybrid. In this uh, presentation, we are going to be looking at the hybrid method that combines both the filter method and the wrapper method. The filter method is just you test if this gene is good or not good. If this gene is actually a biomarker to that cancer status or not a biomarker, then you remove those ones. The wrapper method will continue to say no. Even the ones that are left, we can still optimize them and select the best among them. So we are combining the two. First of all, we filter them, then we wrap them. Then it's give us what we refer to as the hybrid method. The aim of this study is just to maximize accuracy of the classifier that we want to use, using the minimum gene subset possible. So we are maximizing accuracy using the minimum gene subset. That, that gives us the, a multi-objective optimization problem. So, first of all, we use a simulated data to mimic what is, what is likely to happen when we have the real-life data. So, in this, real life, in this simulation data, we have 1,000 genes were simulated, and we have two classes. This is just the data structure of that data. You can see the first 10, from G1 to G10, we are simulated. Sorry if you are seeing this figure. We are simulated to be biomarkers, meaning that they are differentially expressed. We want to say that, okay, from gene 1 to, to, to gene 10, they are actually biomarkers to that cancer status. That is, they can predict, they can be used to predict that cancer status. While from 12 to 1,000, they are not. So we want to see if our method will be able to recognize those 10, and those 10, how we can even optimize them to still reduce them. So because the lower the number of predictors you have, the better. 
Okay? So we simulated that using that uh, concept. Then um, we have the methodology which revolves around uh, multi objective optimization uh, theory. And we, we are able to develop what is called a fitness function. Fitness function is we have two functions, two objectives we want to achieve simultaneously. F1 is the accuracy that we want to maximize. F2 is the number of uh, gene subsets, which is the cardinality that we want to minimize to reduce as much as possible. Okay? And this is the algorithm. I don't know if I have much time to explain this algorithm. This is the algorithm, this is the flow chart of that algorithm that we actually develop. From I dimension, it will pre-process the data. The algorithm will ask if your classes is binary or multi-class. Binary when you have just two classes. Either the person is having cancer or not having cancer. If it is multi-class, which type of cancer? Maybe uh, breast cancer has, I think, five types. Type A, B, C, D, E. Or other type of cancer. You have uh, follicular lymphoma, and all other types. So this is the algorithm, and that is the optimization region where the algorithm perform is uh, optimal work. It's not a black box function, okay? All these are actually carried out using some statistical techniques. And then, of course, somebody was talking about training the model. Yes, the data that we use, we actually train, partition them into two. We train when we use the other test to validate or the test the model. And this, we don't do it once. Just like uh, my other colleague have said, it's always good to train your model as many times as possible. Then you also keep some validation tests because we can have different scenarios. Suppose your scenario are not captured in your train. So what is going to happen? So we train the model. You can see the first time test, the other one is trained. Then we do that out of time. That out can be several thousands of times. So that at the end of the day, you cannot give an average of the estimate, which will be a true representation of your model uh, pa performance indices. We call that Monte Carlo cross validation method, MCCV. Yeah, this is the result for the simulated data. Out of the 1,000 covariates, predictors, genes, or features that we have simulated, when we use the filter method in the first place, it recognizes those tens. And in that order, G5, G9, 6, 1, 10, 8, 3, 2, 4, 7. Okay? It recognizes those 10 that we actually wanted to be Bamaka, to be differentially expressed. They were recognized. Then it's not sufficient for us. Like I said, in that algorithm, the next thing to do is we are going to fit a model. And the model we use here is just the support vector machine with the RBF function, RBF kernel. Radar basis function kernel. So we'll fit SVM on each of these differentially selected uh, predictors and we'll obtain their uh, out of bag estimates, the misclassification error rates. It will be observed here that the last gene, gene 10, happens to give us the minimum. So the minimum, the ME have. Don't forget that minimum is the average of 1,000 iterations. When we iterate it, 1,000 times. That minimum. Uh, is 11.93, and it was given by gene 10. It tells us that gene 10 is one of the first genes to enter into the optimization uh, region, such that then we will now pair the best of this, which is gene 10, with the remaining. Gene 10 to gene 1, gene 10 to gene 2, and we also, uh, we obtain, we also fit another SVM to obtain the minimum MER. You can see from 11.3, when we included another gene, thing, uh, five, gene 5, it reduces the error rate. The lower the error, the better the accuracy. It reduces the error rate to 6.5, 6.05. That means using two genes is better than using just one. We continue in that sequential approach, and we develop a test statistic that can say, is there a significant difference between 11.3 and 6.5? If there is no significant difference, that means we have just used the principle of parsimony and used gene 10 as our optimal gene subset. But there is a significant difference. The test is, this is how the test goes. There is a significant difference that says from 11.93 to 6.05 to 
one and so on and so on until when we added gene two, we have 0.11, which gives us about 99.9 percent .9 accuracy. But by the inclusion of another gene four, now you can see the ME how increases. Once the error rate increases, it tells you that no, the addition of that gene is not good. Then you remove it. Then you stop at where you have the optimal gene. And that is how it goes. You can see the graph showing us the sequential reduction in the error rate as we added gene sequentially. It begins to reduce the error rate until when we get to four genes, we have the minimum. When we, get add, uh, when we added another one, it increases the MAR and we have to choose that point as our optimal gene subset. So we have the performance indices, the sensitivity, that is, if somebody is cancerous, since somebody is having cancer, how will our model or our algorithm be able to detect that this person is having cancer? That's the sensitivity. Specificity is, this person is not having cancer. How will our model, to what rate, will it detect that this person is not having cancer? So these are in percentage, like, for example, out of 100 uh, individuals that will subject to the test, Sensitivity tells us that about 98 of them will be correctly identified as having cancer if they actually have it out of 100. And it goes on, the AUC. Now, we apply this concept to the real life data, the colorectal cancer data. Colorectal cancer is one of the most deadliest, deadliest cancer and has been reported that we will have about 600,000 deaths annually. So, if it's not well monitored, right from the uh, stage one, stage two, up to stage four. In fact, most cases, you don't recognize uh, the first three stages. It is when it gets to the last stage that people start recognizing, and it is always too late uh, by then. So there are different methods that have been recorded, clinical diagnosis. But even at that, none has been able to re uh, report up to 90% accuracy. Clinical diagnosis method, using the colonoscopy, the CT scan method, the barrier enema, and so on and so forth. So if you can get an algorithm, that can do that for us. Why not? The non-clinical approach. Okay? So the materials and method, like I said earlier, is also a binary uh, class data. That is, you can say if the person is having a colon cancer or the person is not having a colon cancer based on the classes for that data. How the first is to try the filter method we, uh, we tried earlier on our simulated data. And it was able to report six Six of those is out of 2,000. Six were reported to be actually biomarker to colorectal cancer. Six genes. And these are the name of the genes. You can see 3 ut hard gene. Some are genes and some are not just uh, genes. They are just untranslated regions. This will be uh, understandable to the medical practitioners. But we are not still comfortable with these six genes. Let's see if we can minimize it and see the actual one. Because in most cases, some of these genes are dependent on each other. Okay. I don't want to be too statistical. That's what I'm trying to. So we fitted uh, SVM on each of these genes. The last one that gave us the minimum MER was uh, 0 0.1650. And we continue in that sequential approach. Also, to have uh, just three genes. That is 817-601-2928. By the time we have these three genes, we have just an error rate of about 9.9%. When we added an, an, another gene, it, the error rate increases, and there's a signal, so there's no need to go further. And this is the graph uh, showing similar results when we use the simulated uh, data. Now, when we re by the time we do our optimization region, we perform that algorithm, only three genes were capable of giving us the best results. And these genes have been verified by the molecular biologist to be the actual gene that uh, actually cause color colorectal cancer if they are highly expressed in any human. Okay? So we have the other performance indices, the specificity, the sensitivity, and other performance indices that was used to measure the accuracy of that or the performance of that data. Um, the, the data for the simulated data and the uh, colon cancer data, you can see they have almost similar results based on our approach to tell the value, to see validate the fact that our approach is giving us a very good or an optimistic result. We also compare with other algorithms in uh, literature, the Naive Bayes, Random Forest, Lasso, and all of that. 
and we find that ours is more parsimonious and has high predictive value. Uh, see, it would be principal company. This plot shows if we use three genes for colorectal cancer, how, in, how well can we partition this thing? How well can we classify based on the performance indices that we already stated? And then finally, we have the dendrogram that shows us, yes, our, our proposed model, the algorithm has actually worked very fine in the prediction of uh, colorectal cancer, or generally in the, in the selection and prediction or efficient feature selection and classification using big data analysis. Yes, the study seems to be optimistic, very good, but like I said earlier, the genes, those genes that were selected using the real life data have been verified by the molecular biologists to be one of the, 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 the three known genes that uh, actually uh, biomarker that are biomarker to colorectal cancer. However, we still need more clinical studies to verify the, uh, the, the etiological pathology of these genes so that at the end of the day, we can collaborate with the computer scientists, molecular biologists, biomedical engineers, and all other stakeholders so that we can bring out, if possible, a chip. We have identified the gene, we have built the model, we have the, the algorithm. The molecular biologists have assent to this, yes, these genes are actually biomarkers. Then we can come in with other stakeholders and produce a chip that can be used, uh, maybe for, by, by, maybe in, instead of going through the pain of uh, cancer diagnosis. Some are, as, uh, some, sometimes when you are uh, going through the cancer diagnosis, you are even exposed to another cancerous uh, elements, such as the race. Again, in some cases, the studies have been done before they discovered that, oh, this thing is not cancerous. It's just some, just some normal, useless something. And they believe it, but the damage has been done. So if you can do that, it will reduce a lot of things. That's it. Uh, thank you for listening. Comments, questions. I know it is a bit statistical. <laughs> Mr. Ibrahim. Okay. Madam. Madam. Yes. Edition. Yeah. First of all, I didn't use the word hybridizing uh, abridice methods. Methods. There's a difference between method and an algorithm. These are the methods that, that, that was hybridized. Uh, I stated it here. The filter method and the wrapper method. And I said, we are going to be using these two. Now, from the flowchart here, for, from the flowchart, you can see from the high dimensional data, so data pre the, pre the data preprocessing, and then uh, there's a question. Is K equals to? That is where the filter method begins. The filter method will just, if K equals to, it performs a particular test, which we refer to as T-test. If K is not two, more than two, precisely three or four, it performs what we call the F-test. And we, here we have a sample. Then the, uh, the wrapper method starts within the optimization region. You can see. It's, uh, that's where the wrapper method starts in. So we are bringing that, then it's like a stooge age hybridized uh, algorithm. I hope I've answered your question. Ah, the class that I use in doing the variable selection method. Yes, I said it earlier on that uh, we fitted SVM on each of these uh, 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 variables. We fitted support vector machine using the radial basis function kernel. Of course, we have to tune the kernel. We tune the kernel to be able to obtain the optimal value of those kernel parameters because the kernel parameters are database. You can't just do choose one and think it will be sufficient for all, optimal for all data. No, it has to be database or data driven. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you. Prof. I actually am a bounce statistician.
definitely. Let me uh, let me start from I think the last question. Let me start from the last question. Please, you can remind me if I forget anything. Uh, yes, you see, statistics is like a tool that is being used by almost uh, in any field. The this study is actually a stepping approach. And somebody was talking about model building, model deployment, and all that. And, and that is why I said the idea is where the collaboration comes in. Yes, we have done the study. We have carried out the, uh, the rigorous aspect of getting the algorithm work very fine, doing look at regression, looking at evaluating the model, and doing all of that. Now, this is what we have done. The medical practitioners have come in here to say, okay, you have said these are the genes that are actually responsible, according to your study, to this type of particular types of cancer or whether the cancer status of an individual. We are going to take it up, particularly the oncologist. We are going to take it up and examine those genes that we have selected based on that algorithm. Are they actually within their own, using their own expertise approach? And they have found out that yes, it is actually true. That yes, we have these genes that if they are expressed, normally everybody has genes in the body. Only that the expression level, the expression level may be high, low in uh, individuals, and it's not the same. So if these genes are actually differentially spread, their expression level is very high, then the next thing that will be done is what we call gene therapy. That is, you can isolate those genes. There's a method being used now, gene therapy. You isolate those genes. You do some treatment on that genes to suppress the expression level, which will reduce the chance of having that particular type of cancer. I think that is where the medical practitioner comes in. Then the data set, maybe I forgot when I... Uh, uh, I think I stated it here that the, the data set, the real life data set, the real life, uh, the real life application is the colon cancer data. The colon cancer data was obtained, uh, I think, yes, it's an online data. And that's the, uh, the site or the repository where you can obtain the data. The, uh, the, what this uh, method, the, what this uh, study actually focused on is as uh, cancer colon cancer, breast cancer, whatever cancer are the same. We have uh, the same genes in the body, but the expression level may be different. But uh, a study is going on now to see if location, somebody was talking about geospatial, is it here or somewhere? If location can actually uh, affect uh, such study, yes. Maybe people in Nigeria, because our color and some other, you know, I just other thing that we have in our body. Maybe it can actually affect or cannot affect. I think a study is going on there. We are looking at uh, Africa as, as black country, of course, Nigeria as a case study. We are looking at data from Asia. The unfortunate thing is that we are limited here in Nigeria. We don't have the data. In fact, the microarray technology alone, we don't even have. I've gone to several places. I've to get, if can even get the microarray technology that I can use to express out data. Because the process is a very tedious one to express out those genes. Unfortunately, we don't have. So we rely on data that is available. And then there's particular uh, data that has been used in this study because we can't present everything here that has been used. That was actually a clinical uh, study that we are eventually part of. Thank you, ma'am.
stick with us. Okay. Okay. Number three, I think that if you use high throughput um, data set, we may not be talking about these methods. We'll probably be talking about um, algorithms. And um, lately, we use a lot of machine learning, deep learning, transfer learning algorithms that can do um, a lot, especially in cancer, you know. So I don't know if your future work captures that, or have you been able to contact some bioinformaticians, computer scientists, to know the way forward on this? Yeah, the thank you. on microarray data. Okay. Not, I'm being obsolete. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ba. You see, um, like I said, there are several variant types of big data. We have the genomics, we have the proteomics, we have systemomics, and so many of them. Okay. Now, the purpose of using this data is because this is what is available to us. As at the time of this study, the microarray gene expression data. We are actually interested in the statistical genomics approach of getting uh, the classification, efficient feature selection and classification. And to answer, before I answer your second question, is that we have, we are in the era of high throughput data analysis. Why do we need this particular approach? You agree with me that whatever algorithm, whatever method you are using, if you have a bad data, so to speak, bad in quotes, then your algorithm will perform also badly. I have carried out a research whereby we have to look at the weight, even the weight of these particular genes or the feature that we have selected. I'm not just selecting them on the face value. So where I'm, what, what I'm saying in essence is that there is a need. All those 1,000, 10,000, 300, several thousands of genes cannot be a, predict, a predictor, a biomarker to the cancer status that we have. Otherwise, we'll just be wasting using wasting resources. When you are predicting using about 50,000 genes and you want to study each of them one after the other to classify an individual, of course, it is time wasting the speed, accuracy, and all that. And all the, all that. But we know that definitely there are some that are important. Just like the example I gave earlier. If you go to an hospital, you, 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 you start to give your, your complaint, headache, vomiting, your eyes is white, and all that. The doctor will start insinuating some things before carrying out a test to confirm all this and say, okay, that you are having malaria is not a precursor that you must have. I mean, you are having fever is not a precursor that you must have malaria. There are some other things that are involved. So we need to probably prune it down that which of these predictors are important to the outcome that we are interested in, that outcome. So first of all, we pull it down. After pulling it down, it is also established that, look, this one that you have pulled down, data are, are dependent. We call them uh, motivated data because like we have now, Ma, your age, your height, your weight are interwoven. As we all know, as you grow, your age, your weight also increases. So how can you separate weight and height? Definitely, they are in that way. So if you have used one in that sense, if you are able to select a particular gene in, in that sense, then it will have taken care of others. We call it uh, the uh, Pareto analysis. Actually, it goes along with the Pareto uh, uh, analysis. So that is the cross of the matter of this particular research. To be able to prune down those irrelevant genes that can disturb the performance of your model or algorithm, so to speak. Otherwise, if you don't do that, your algorithm will perform woefully. So if you have a very good data, and this research, as I have said earlier on, Ma, uh, there is a further study that has been carried out to examine that these genes, they are actually what? They are actually a biomark, they are biomarkers 
to this outcome. But, you know, we still need to carry out further research. I have been in talk with some uh, computer scientists, even biomedical engineers, that are looking at how can we look at it now. We have these genes. There is there a way to incorporate this into a chip so that going through the process of cancer uh, diagnosis, the clinical approach will be reduced significantly and while still maintaining the prediction and classification accuracy. Thank you, man. Thank you very much uh, for the wonderful session. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a parallel session, session going on there in all rooms, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful one. So uh, the next session that is coming up now, it's um, so it's a pre-recorded uh, pre session, actually. And the topic is uh, interpreting machine learning models a hands-on exploration of model explainability in Python by Abidin Bello. Uh, it will come up soon. And uh, after that session, immediately, we're going for a poster session. And after poster session, we're going for lunch. After lunch, we'll come back here for the announcement of the uh, uh, winner for the poster presentation and also for Akaton. And after that, we go into Women in AI. And after Women in AI, we have the, uh, the special information the VC of uh, TAU wants to give us. Um, that's you know, the overview of what we have left. And then probably some, something around that time, we'll go for dinner if you want it. But I know you don't want it, so we'll just skip it. Thank you very much. It's actually been a pleasure having everyone in attendance. Yes. So, so uh, first of all, my to go by the name Abidin Belo, and uh, presently work as an IT consultant uh, at EPL Resources Limited. Um, and the title of my session is Interpreting Machine Learning Models, a hands-on exploration of model explainability in Python. So when we talk about model explainability, it is actually crucial to machine learning, especially when dealing with complex models, such as deep learning neural networks. Understanding why a model makes specific predictions, decision-making process, and helps build trust and reliability to the model's outcomes. So let's just say, for instance, you tend to be working as an ML engineer, or probably a data scientist, yes, and you, um, you tend to you prepare the model and you want to communicate the results to the stakeholders. How are you going to come about that? So, sorry for that uh, uh, notification. Let me just, uh, um, I think, yes, I think we're good. So, yes, so how you come about decisions? So, model, your model, the model explainability helps you to understand which features actually contribute more which one contributes less and how um, the stakeholders could come in and okay, decisions could be made around your results. So in this hands-on session, we'll dive in, into various techniques and libraries in Python to interpret and explain machine learning model. So moving on, um, so it's gonna be just a short one, just for us to practice and understand it better. So we'll be going through the introduction to model explainability, feature importance analysis, Permutation, feature importance, uh, LIME, which is known as local interpretable model agonistic explanations. And also we'll be doing a case study comparing both uh, LIME and one other technique will be 
taking on. So um, then we conclude and give room for questions. So introduction. Model explainability is actually the ability to understand and interpret predictions and decisions made by a machine learning model. So it aims to actually provide insights into why a model behaves why it does, and it helps build trust on that particular model, which also points like to the transparency of the decision making process. So in this short explanation, we'll be discussing the uh, importance of model explainability. So one of the importance of all, let me see, interpretable models is trust and transparency because it's you you build trust on that model from what you could see and it actually speaks volume so you could actually tell which one is not and also bias and fairness you would also be able to specify if this model is biased towards some certain features or not and moving on regulatory compliance error diagnosis and debugging so types of model explainability techniques okay so first one is future importance analysis. So this is actually um, a technique that determines the importance of features in model decision processes, which helps identify the most influential features and their impact on the predictions. Okay, techniques like permutation feature will be actually, which will be taking on, uh, and sharp values are commonly used for features importance analysis, yes. I know most of the, let's say, intermediate DS or data analysis must have been using SHARP for their models interpretation. So, and the second one is a partial dependence plot. So partial dependence plots showcase how a model predictions change with variation in specific features while holding other constants. Now, they provide insight into the relationship between individual features and the target variable. Yes, uh, so now we have global interpretable methods. So this technique aims to provide overall um, understanding about the model's behavior by summarizing its complex decisions process. For example, it includes rule extraction, decision tree, and model agonistics techniques like LIME, which would also be touching and sharp. So the last one is local interpretability methods. So this actually focuses on explaining the individual prediction by model. Techniques like Lime and Sharp also falls within this category. So if you notice from these techniques, they are actually intertwined, like they are into each other. Sorry, let me just pardon my English. So they are into each other. They, they actually fit in almost all the techniques. So that is also saying that there might be lags in some area depending on the data you're working on. So by understanding this importance of model explainability and various techniques available, we gain insight into the inner workings of machine learning models, which addresses biases and fairness, and also enhance or ensure regulatory compliance is, is, um, is effective enough. And also the trust in the AI system is also um, backed up through model explainability. So moving on to the next one, we will soon be getting into the answer on briefly briefly we'll be getting into the answer briefly uh, and so the next one is future importance analysis future importance analysis yes so i hope you're taking notes down because at the end of the hands on i'm going to ask questions and let's say i get just one person gets to go with a very let's say little token let me just say that in little token so just a sense of appreciation so um Future importance analysis is a technique used to determine the relevance and impact of features in machine learning models. It also helps in identifying the most influential features and their contribution to model predictions. So in this short explanation also, we will provide an overview features of methods that will be used. For example, implementation of permutation feature importance would also be emphasized in this section. So overview of future importance model. Now, the first one is permutation view, permutation feature importance. Yeah, we must have heard permutation, combination and permutation in our mathematics, but yeah, it's, it's quite a little bit different here. So this method measures the decrease in model performance when the value of the feature are randomly shuffled. Yes, it must be randomly shuffled for you to actually get a good score 
pictures and the value so you can see those with positive sides are the average income average area income average area house income average area number of bedrooms okay so if you want to compare this to the previous one which was uh works and they've not been able to get they just use it that way and she was stable was, we just visualized and we okay we could see but uh blime actually showed us the positive side and negative side of those features and so let's say okay to further enhance your knowledge about model inter explain explainability you can just um take make use of these resources interpretable machine learning by christopher molan um the lime github repository you could, could go there to see and also contribute if you're not satisfied to how the model actually gives you can take it up as an open open source project on your own just to contribute to the community or the the, the documentation yes and the last one is a model agonistic interpretability of machine learning workshop yes so remember explainability is an ongoing area of research and development by staying updated with the latest advancement and applying the techniques covered in this session you can make informed decisions gain insight from your models and contribute to responsible development you now deployment of machine learning systems so thank you very much uh, but before so i'll be entertaining questions now just i say two to three questions because of my time yes let's just say three okay let's give it the two two questions because i'll also ask a question and definitely maybe the uh, person that gets it right gets a token so question time
Ayan Makebu Initiative. And today I'll be exposing you to the updated opponents at Google Research and what Google Ayan Makebu is all about. I have just a short time, but then I'm going to run you through what Google Research is all about. So we are addressing the, uh, the, act, the state of the act. Our team aspires to make discovery and impact everyone and call to our approach is sharing our research and to, to foil progress in the field. So to join the team as a researcher, all you have to do is just visit the website research.google and go to the outreach section and you can also find the career on the page. It's all about researchers and everyone here are into one or two and you can become a researcher by just visiting google.research. And for faculty members, you can visit the features research collaborations and see how you can get started with the Google research programs. And as a faculty member also, you can visit the Award for Inclusion Research Program. It's a program that everyone who is part of the faculty, uh, staffs, academians can apply to any of these programs. This current program, S plus CSR, um, has been running for a while. Thomas Adeo University was one of the host institutions that got the award to host Explore CSR. That is why you can see our banner, our logo on the banner, Google Explore CSR. They sponsor, um, they give support to tertiary institutions to promote the, the, their mission, the mission of AI on campus. And there's research for Google Scholar program, and you can visit you can be a visiting researcher uh, at Google, and also there are past programs you can check out. And for students, there is PhD fellowship program for everyone, there is CS research mentorship program for everyone, and there is scholarship programs, internships, student research opportunity, and conferences scholarship. That is, if there is any scholarship that is AI related and as a researcher, uh, a student researcher, you can apply for scholarship to attend any of these programs. So back to what's happening at Remarkable. Now you've attended Inda by X. What's next? I want to tell you two things about fighting imposter syndrome, and that is where we talk about what being Remarkable is all about. I will just leave you with two things because of time. I'm going to skip this. And what Remarkable is all about? Um, no, sorry. Trying to control that from here. Okay, Remarkable is a Google program that happens as an internet thing at Google. And before they took it out, they tried to look at what are the strengths of our employees because they notice every year our employees, the employees keep leaving and resigning from Google. And they say, okay, there's a way we can get to know what their strengths are and their weaknesses and see where the best fit in. Not that you studied uh, economics and you're working. Um, in an agricultural farm or something. So your course should be what, your uh, field of study should be what you are doing at Google. So they use this particular initiative to learn more about their employee and see where they best fit in. And this uh, helps them to fight what uh, imposter syndrome has caused them over the years because some people find it difficult to express themselves when they are in the wrong field. But if, when, they are, when they are able to like, shift them to the right field, they will talk about themselves. So it's a global movement that empowers everyone, including underrepresented groups, to celebrate their achievements in the workplace and beyond while challenging social perception around self promotion. So this is not a workshop, but a short talk. So the truth is, I'm going to leave you. Um, leave you with today after this section is that each time you meet someone new, each time you try to communicate about your strength, your weakness, what you do, I want to tell you it's not bragging if it's based on fact that you published a paper at Indabai X 2023 and you share it on the internet and people are wondering and you are scared of that side talk that why is he even posting these things? Why is he my belief too in their eyes, like why are they trying to they try to limit you, try to look at you in some way that what do you just do? I try to promote on the internet. My friend, what do you I think it's just a shite play? But then I'm trying to tell you now that it's not bragging if it's based on fact. That you are here, you take a picture, you post on the internet, tag whoever you need to tag, and you promote it and tell people that this is where you are. It's not bragging because it's based on facts. 
Then the second thing I'm going to leave you with today is accomplishments do not speak for themselves. So each time you go out there and tell the world about who you are, your personality, your accomplishments will not speak for themselves except you be the voice for yourself. So these two things should challenge you to look at self-promotion from different perspectives that if you see someone coming to you to introduce themselves, don't look down at them. Instead, try to value them with the assurance of words and what they are sharing with you. Are we together? So the two things are, can we say together? The first one, it's not bragging if it's based on facts. Can we say together? It's not bragging louder. It's not bragging if it's based on facts. And secondly, accomplishments do not speak for themselves. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Steven. It's not bragging. It's what? It's based on fact. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much. So, um, so right now, uh, the next thing we have on the program list is to go for lunch, but it's raining. It's raining now. And the next program is Women in AI, and also the announcement of, uh, you know, on the program, announcement of the winner for poster presentation and the hackathon, which the coalition is still going on. We, we have the winner for the hackathon already, but for our poster presentation, it's uh, going on. And uh, we need to eat, we need to take our lunch. Can we go for lunch now? Can we go for lunch now? You guys are saying no. I can only hear no. Can we go for lunch? One yes, 100 no's. All right, so let's go for lunch now. So after our lunch, we have the announcement of uh, poster presentation, the winners, and hackathon. Please, let's go for lunch. We have. Just 20 minutes to have our lunch, please. Just 20 minutes. Aha. Aha. Now, we should finish and we should go for lunch. All right. So we'll do that. So we'll finish and we'll go for lunch. Perfect. We should finish all the program and we'll go for lunch. Don't forget the, the, the important information we have from our VC, right? Should we also do that before going for lunch? We should do everything before going for lunch. Okay. And uh, there is lunch and there is dinner. Normally, when we finish all, we'll go for dinner. But now you're saying we should finish all and then go for dinner. I'll go for lunch. We should go for lunch now. And I'm saying we have just 20 minutes to do that. I will come to the cafeteria to come and shout and drag everybody back here. I promise. All right, so let's go for lunch now, please. Thank you very much. Life, no stress in living soft life. I don't know how I survive this tall life. Girls, so I get my baby rich for five. Every word with it come out of my mouth, I didn't monetize and bye bye. No get energy, and I can't really shout, and I can't really. Ooh, you shaka more remedy. Cash money, cash mula, cash in, cash out. Baby, why should I catch feelings more than the flies? Dance too loud. Did they pay me like black person tribunal? Ooh, I too soft like pop up. And my bank a lot to bad, you go mad, you go up. Guy, you better wear gloves before you touch on me.
0302-392-9899. Email admissions at tau.edu.ng. Register at Thomas Adeume University and enjoy a lifelong experience. Thomas Adeume University, where godliness, discipline, and academic excellence are guaranteed. Are you looking to start university education? Do you seek where you can be a total person and enjoy the best of university training in a serene and conducive environment with modern infrastructure, qualified lecturers and staff? Then, the search is over. Thomas Adeumi University or Kokwara State is the place for you. Our curriculum is designed to meet student entrepreneur and technical skills necessary to fit into the dynamics of the society. Admissions are currently ongoing into the faculties of basic medical sciences, computing and applied sciences, management and social sciences to provide the academic springboard for greater heights in life, all at affordable fees and convenience of payment. Visit our website www.tau.edu.ng, call 0803-288-5843 or 0803-247-4993. WhatsApp 0905-392-9899. Email admissions at tau.edu.ng. Register at Thomas Adeume University and enjoy a lifelong experience. Thomas at Dewman University, where godliness. Are you looking to start university education? Do you seek where you can be a total person and enjoy the best of university training in a serene and conducive environment with modern infrastructure, qualified lecturers, and staff? Then, the search is over. Thomas Adeumi University or Kokwara State is the place for you. Our curriculum is designed to meet student entrepreneur and technical skills necessary to fit into the dynamics of the society. Admissions are currently ongoing into the faculties of basic medical sciences, computing and applied sciences, management and social sciences to provide the academic springboard for greater heights in life, all at affordable fees and convenience of payment. Visit our website www.tau.edu.ng, call 0803-288-5843 or 0803-247-4987, WhatsApp 0905-392-9899, email admissions at tau.edu.ng, register.
And please, um, please let's get settled. And also, let's remain settled um, during the, the program and even after the program. During the program of uh, um, Umen AI and also after Umen AI, because of uh, the important uh, information that needs to be passed across to us by the VC of uh, Thomas Adelman University, um, is actually the, the, the information is very important. So I want us all to, to stay behind. Uh, it's, it's going to be after the, the, the program. Right, you know, immediately before the closing remark, please, I want us all to uh, still behind, get seated and relax. So now, um, I'll be calling the, the moderator for the Umen AI session now, for her to, to start the session, and the person of Mrs. Awokoya, please uh, help me welcome her as she comes on stage. So, men, you, you know, this is also for you because um, it's for women, women in AI. Uh, but if you look at it very well, it's still we men in AI. So, it's for everyone. Please stay behind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good, after, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Oh, oh, sorry, we are still in the afternoon, I guess. Sorry, it's because of the rain. Good afternoon. Yeah. So now it's time for the women in Hey High session. Actually, we want to talk about women, but you know that uh, when, we don't, when we have women, we also would have men because uh, without men, we can't call a lady woman. So we, uh, like the moderator has said, we, we also want you around so as to give us uh, some advice and stuff. So thank you very much. Uh, without further ado, I would like to call on the other women that we're going to man this panel together. So I have the pleasure of inviting to the podium Dr. Mrs. Sekinat Folonsho. Thank you. Also, Dr. Mrs. Abikoye, please. Professor, oh wow, thank you. I'm sorry, Ma. Professor Mrs. Abikoye. Yeah, congratulations, Ma. So, uh, again, I would like to welcome Dr. Mrs. Marion. Am I right? Marion, yeah, so please step up stage. She's not here. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. And uh, Professor Oladipo, our VC, I know she will come, she will join us soon. Uh, Mrs. Afolabi, where's she? Mrs. Ghani at Afolabi. I saw her just now. Perhaps she stepped out. Yeah, she will join us too. And my name is Mrs. Awokoya Ayodele. Okay, thank you. So I would like to also welcome to the podium Dr. Mrs. Ogundoku. Yeah, Dr. Rosalyn Ogundoku, please come on up stage. And also Dr. Salu, please come up stage. It's a women affairs. I will want to hear from you. We know you, you have a wealth of knowledge. So as upcoming women, we love to hear 
from you and gain experiences from you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Mas. Please, a round of applause for her as she's stepping up stage. Thank you, Ma. You're welcome. So, yeah. Yeah, so I, like I said, my name is uh, Ayodele Hawokoya. I'm a PhD student from the University of Ibadan, Nigeria here. Uh, my research topic is actually in NLP. Um, yeah, and I'm also trying to learn. Uh, yes, I'm still learning. And that is why I think I have the privilege to have before me our amiable women that are done really well and have gone uh, greater heights to learn from. So, and I, would, I also believe that most of us here are also eager to hear one or two things from our mommies here, especially the ladies. We are looking up onto them as mentors and we want to be believed and we believe we are going to gain one or two things from them. So, uh, starting from my right, I would like to hear our panelists introduce themselves. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Mrs. Rosalind Oluwashi Ogudoku. Okay, from Landmark University, and my research areas are computer vision, artificial intelligence, and um, deep learning, and the likes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Marion Adebi from Landmark University. I um, love my informatics. Thank you. Yes, uh, my name is Dr. Sekina Spolo Rosho. I'm from the uh, Department of Mathematical Sciences, Olabi Sonoban University of Goiwe. And my research area are artificial intelligence, machine learning, music information retrieval, and um, AI applications. And um, I always like to add, you know, we belong to many women group, and this group is very, very essential to any uh, function that we attain. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Abiko Yoluakeme Christiana, a professor of computer science. Thank you. I am Dr. Shakira Tadironke Sali from the Department of Computer Science, University of Illinois. My research area includes NLP, Natural Language Processing, Information Retriever, and Machine Learning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, let's give a round of applause again to our mommies here. Thank you. God bless you. So, uh, without, let's just move into uh, today's discussion. We know that uh, women, let me say ladies now, in this field of AI, they sometimes face uh, some challenges, mostly when uh, they want to go into the field. And I would like um, all the panelists to just look into, to try to, in your own perspective, or your own opinion now, what do you think are the challenges that limit ladies from venturing in the field, into the field of AI, and what do you think? You can just, in, in, in your own words, just talk, pick a point and give us a solution. What do you think? It's not compulsory that I, I, I may not pass this round the, I may not pass the mic around everyone because of time. So let me start from uh, Professor Abikoyema. Just tell us from your experience, ma, what do you think are the challenges that women have, and how can they overcome it? Thank you, ma. Thank you. I think one of the challenges that women, and I will start from girls, because you cannot become a woman without being a girl. So one of the challenges is lack of representation, even from the inception in your secondary school education, that some people, they have some uh, social and cultural belief that there are some courses that are meant for ladies and that are not meant for them. Like, if you want to be do engineering, I'm, I'm talking at the aspect of STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Because before you can become an AIS part, at least you start from there. And 
some people will believe that as a, as a woman or as a girl, what do you want to do with engineering? Why not go and study accounting? Why not go and study economics and all that? So I think representation of women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are not too um, obvious from the beginning. So I think we should start that um, debate, we should start that evangelism, I will call it evangelism, from the inception, from our girl child, telling them that they can still be a science student, even if they are ladies. If you go to medicine now, you see more of men. If you get, go to engineering, you see, see more of boys. You can start even as a woman in your house, believe in your girls, tell them they can do all things, tell them they can do what men can do. And from there, that spirit will be in them and they will be able to face the world and they will be able to take up any form of challenges that may come their way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Yeah, so you see, I, as men, we have a responsibility also. Like I said, we need to be here. It's not just the women that will empower or tell the girls that they can do it or make sure that they are in the uh, STEM field, but our men could also do that. Thank you very much for that uh, exposition, Ma. And uh, Ma, okay, I would let me leave you. <laughs> yes, Ma, uh, Dr. Sakinat, there is this uh, imposter syndrome that ladies face a lot. Uh, because I've noticed when there are job applications, let, let me use that for an example now, and they say they need um, tech, they need the people that can write Python, experience in Python and stuff. You see men that are not even, that they're just starting. They just have like six months experience. They will be applying to that field. They will be applying for that job that is requiring, requesting two years experience. But ladies that have been in the field, perhaps, like two and a half years, they'll say, ah, I'm not sure I can do it. Ah, I don't think, Ma, how can you help us? What can you tell us that could help us get out of this imposter syndrome and push and launch out? Just like men, even when they're not qualified, they get, they go for it. Thank you. Um, number one, the first thing is self-confidence. Can you do this? Number two, um, like I used to tell any girl or any lady that comes my way first of all accept who you are now if you don't accept who you are then there's no how you can go forward now i know that probably um data science i can say that um, i'm an expert level to an extent maybe 40 or 50 percent even with that 40 percent be contented that's the only way you can move on so that when you are faced with something higher you can give it a try. Like now, probably, maybe you are faced with this research area, or probably you can apply um, some of our machine learning models on, to some kind of data, or maybe you want to attend hackathon. You think you cannot do it, but even if you know a simple model, a simple model can work better sometimes than even a complex model. But if you don't give it a try, if you don't build that confidence, you know that self-confidence, that okay, I can do it. I know data science, I know they have this thing that they say can do. I can do it, let me try, I can do it. So if you don't have that confidence to push yourself forward, then if you don't push yourself, who will? If you don't want to give something a try, who will push you? Nobody, but you go ahead and do it and try to do what you can do. So I can say that the first thing to do is self-confidence. Look within yourself and do what you can. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Please, a round of applause for her. Yeah, as she's giving a contribution, our professor entered. I don't know. Can she? Okay. So I would like to invite to the podium, Professor. Yes, uh, distinguished participants, I apologize to the women in AI panelists. Actually, I was supposed to be here, but I was waiting to receive my chancellor. I have the honor to introduce the chancellor of Thomas Adeumi University, engineer Dr. Johnson Bamdele Adeumi. Yeah. 
is accompanied by Honorable Ade Dohi, a veteran, veteran communicator. Okay. Welcome, sir. We're honored to have you in our midst. So the Women in Artificial Intelligence panel, it's an integral part of the Indaba X, is uh, going on. And then after that, we invite you to give your closing speech and... Thank you very much. Sir, it's a pleasure having you amidst us. You're welcome, sir. So, uh, sorry, uh, we might, let's just continue with this uh, panel, please. So, uh, thank you, Dr. Sekinat, for that uh, motivation. I would like um, Ms. Uh, Dr. Ogundoku to please help us. We know for women to, ask, uh, to get to some leadership position, they should be able to have some skills. Ma, please, I want you to help us shed light into how women can develop leadership skills that could help them get to leadership position, especially in this uh, field of AI. We've seen women actually as, uh, get going higher, but how can they lead? Because when you are doing Akaton, for example, you see ladies, they don't want to be the team lead. They want to be the team member, let a man lead. I, I don't know, how can you, what, do you have something you can just say to help us out? Thank you, ma'am. Right, thank you. Um, like um, Doctor just said, self-confidence is very important. You have to have confidence in yourself that you can actually do what um, responsibility you are given to. Then um, sometimes having mentors can also assist. When you have mentors, that have been through that, um, that position before, when you have methods that you are looking up to, you always strive as much as possible to get to where they are, to even pass where they are. So sometimes having a mentor or mentors can also push you to get to, or to want to develop yourself in getting to some roles or you have some responsibility or some leadership position. Then from there you know, okay, you can actually get to fulfill the responsibility or tax that you're actually given to. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Yes, so you spoke about having mentor. Um, Mrs. Marion Ma, I would like you to please help us as women. How can we get mentors? And even when we get mentors, what should we do to keep these mentors and ensure that we, we get the best from them, Ma? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, how can we get mentors? You need to know what you are looking for in a mentor. That means you need to know yourself. A lot of speakers have spoken here today. And the first thing I picked is that you have to develop some kind of confidence in yourself. You yourself, as a woman, as a female, as a girl, are you biased? You might be biased. You know, this thing is an unconscious thing. It's a stereotype um, thing, you know? You just assume that some roles are meant for men or male, and some roles are meant for females. For instance, uh, you are in an hospital and they say a surgeon is coming. You just automatically assume it's a male. And then you suddenly see a female professor. Who is the surgeon? What comes to mind? That means in the first place, you yourself, the patient, you are biased, so you need to check that. So now getting, going to getting mentors, that is what I am talking about. So you may choose to, um, you may want to have a male mentor or a female mentor, but you need to know what you are looking for in a mentor. And this is a really broad topic because there are responsibilities of a mentee and responsibilities of mentor. And in the first place, what is a mentor? I think um, in a layman's language, Mentorship is, um, you know, a brain to pick, a hair, an earring here, and a push to the right direction. So you need someone to push you to the right direction. You need a brain to pick. That means you are duplicating somebody else's brain. You want to be like someone. You want to walk like the person. You want to talk like the person. I'll use myself as an example. We used to have a vice chancellor at Covenant University. I started teaching. Uh, you know, I started working at Covenant University when it started in 2000, uh, 2002. And then, within a short while, we had a female substantive, um, um, 
vice chancellor, in, uh, that is um, Professor Isaiah Bayan, in blessed memory. And you know, when she talks, you know, in fact, when she's coming to the front, the kind of confidence she comes with, you know that you want really, if you want to be great, you want to be like this person. You want to build your sense in that, you know, she, she's, she's, she has the elegance, she has the presence, she will capture the audience, she will take charge of the situation. And then, so you know, need to know who you are and what you want in a mentor. And so you study this person and then you go for the person. So now you need to be able to keep relationship. You need to be able to, you know, to maintain this relationship. You know, you need to understand the mentor you are looking for or that you have chosen. You need to understand the person. You need to stand by her rule. You know there will be boundaries. You definitely need to set boundaries so that you don't go beyond your boundaries. You know what she wants, what she likes. You respect her time or his time. And at the same time, you take caution. Like then she will say caution, caution, caution. And you know what that means. You know? Thank you. <laughs> when they say caution, you know what it means. It means you are, you are passing your boundary. So you stay put where you are. Don't pass the boundary. That's what it means. So there are several things to look for in a mentor. Especially when you are now choosing a career, especially when you are now a female, especially when you are in an area that you know that it's male dominated and you are going in there. That means you need to develop, you know, communication skills, very good communication skills is another, you know, thing that you should have. In fact, to be a leader, to be a mentor, to be a mentee, to be anything, to stand anywhere, standing straight, standing right. You need to have this to be able to interact with people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. We need to know how to keep relationship in order to sustain. Sorry. In order to sustain a mentor-mentee relationship. Thank you. Ma, lastly, because of our time, I would like us to just talk about work-life balance among women. I would push this question to um, Miss, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Mrs. Ogundoku, am I right? Uh, Dr. Mrs. Sally, sorry. I would like to push the question to her, and I want us all to say one or two things about it because I know this is what we are facing also, how to balance our life and work. And at the same time, I want us to talk about not just women, also ladies, especially those that are not married yet. How can they position themselves and not get too overwhelmed by career such that they lose uh, that wonderful man that is uh, approaching them? Please, in just one, one minute. Uh, do I have one minute? 30, 30 seconds. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Now, talking about work-life balance is one of the challenges that we women face, whether you are in AI or you are a career woman. Now, one of the things, I will use myself as an example. One of the things that has actually worked for me is to have a kind of to-do list for each day. I know what I want to do. Then I will make sure I include my family life, the, the, all, all, like what I want to do for my kids, the, the, what I want to do for my husband, so I will include it in my to-do list. And I will make sure I, I ensure that at least I, I allocated some time to each of those tasks. So at the end of the day, I was able to balance the work, the life as a married woman. Thank you. Thank you so much. Before you can say you are successful as a woman, you must be successful in your career. You must be successful at the home front. And also, you must have a part in any form of religion that you belong to. So these three is a lot. And I'm a typical example. By the grace of God, I'm a professor. By the grace of God, I'm a mother of three children. And by the grace of God, I'm a pastor in my ministry. So, I have to be a pastor, I have to be a mother, and I have to be a career woman. So how do I balance this? You must know how to manage your time. You must know how to share workload. 
you must know how to manage stress if as a woman in your house you need to do so many things we have so many utensils that can help you to do things at the glimpse of like i'm going to give an example if you want to cook beans now i'm just using that one as an example and you want to go and use uh, maybe cobots it will not work because so many other things that you need to attend to so there are so many things you can get at home that can assist you as a woman that will make you to do your work fast at the home when, when you're at home management that's what i'm trying to say so that you'll be able to attend to so many other things so if you need to get somebody to help you at home it is not an, a bad idea if you need to get some things that will help you uh, rice cooker pressure pots anything that can assist you to make your work you do your work quick and you'll be able to do attend to another thing there's no thing bad about it but um, above it all, you need the grace of God. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, the only thing that I think can make a work-life balance is planning. You plan your time. Because for a woman, success is multifaceted. You, can, you have to be successful in all aspects. Be successful in your marriage, be successful as a mother, be successful in your career, be successful as a mentor. But above all, I think if you plan well and you manage your time, everything will work out well. Thank you. Thank you. Maintaining a work, um, a balance between work and family life is possible. We have seen examples, so we can learn, learn from them. That is, you know, resting on the shoulders of those that have gone ahead of us, which is mentorship. Also, you can make your job, you know, really interesting, but not overwhelming. Then you can carry your family along in whatever you are doing. If you carry your family along, they will be in that job with you. In fact, they will understand because they are the support you need. To be successful at work, you need the support at home. To, and that is when you can have an all-round success. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, I won't repeat what others have been saying. In summary, I'll just use myself as an example, balancing work, um, career with family. Most times, my day is for my family, and then at midnight, I do some of my career work. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can, I, I can, um, I think you can all see that my panel, uh, my panelists have made it to, uh, made us understand that women, we are so empowered that we can do anything we decide to do. So please, as women, let's jam our hands together for us, please. Women, yes, we can, we can do it. We are, anything we think we want to do, we can do it. So please, let, uh, let's not uh, end ourselves with anything. Push ahead, forge ahead, whatever you want to do, do, you can. All you just need to do, as uh, Dr. Mrs. has said, get a mentor. Once you have a mentor, I think with everything, the, the journey will be so easy. Thank you very much, uh, my, mo my mothers, for uh, joining us today. We hope next year we'll see you. Please, you can all reach out to them to ask any question you want because of our time. Thank you. We want to appreciate you all for joining us at this session. And we believe uh, other next year we will also see us uh, in this Women in AI session. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone, uh, for, for the wonderful session. For the We Men in AI uh, session. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so uh, moving on to the next one quickly. <laughs> moving on to the next one quickly, we are going to uh, be announcing. Uh, going to the announcement of the winner of the poster presentation and also the winners for the hackathon that has been on for some days now. We have our winners already. So um, I will call um, Dr. Mrs. Sekina to come and announce the winner for the poster presentation. Please welcome her. Thank you, everyone, um, for 
spending time with us. You know, we always say that uh, no poster presentation, no in Daba. But um, today, um, we have many posters, like um, up to 25. Um, we have more than those people that have submitted. But just like we said yesterday, about 30% of the poster submissions were for women. We are very grateful. That's um, an encouragement from our side. And just like we used to say, there is no bad research, there is no good research. No, there is good research, there is no bad research. And there is no bad researcher. Every research has results. Sometimes you can have a positive result. Sometimes you can have a negative result. Sometimes you could have models that have been doing so well, and suddenly one data just came and gave the model a negative result. The only thing you have to do is interpret those results, explain why your result is like that. So for all of our poster presentation, for this, our Indabai 4.0 at uh, Thomas Ade Women University, all our posters were excellent. And all the presenters, they did well. But a winner has to emerge. Because just like we have said, um, this is Indaba X. The X means all countries in Africa. So this is Indaba X Nigeria. Now, we are going to Ghana in September. I'm sure that some of us have started receiving mail for uh, receiving congratulatory mail that we are going to Ghana. And Nigeria in our usual characteristics, anywhere we go, especially for deep learning in Daba, our, we usually have the largest cluster there, whether for poster presentation, spotlight talk. So um, now a winner has to emerge. And the winner is going to Indaba in September to represent Nigeria. Though we still have some other people that are coming there to present, that means that the competition never ends. Slightly went above us. And it's not that the research is better than everybody did well. So I have the singular honor to congratulate Ngele Emmanuel and his group. And um, their topic is um, geosemantic proofing of uh, brand specific customer experience using citizen generated social media comments. Thank you. Can I have him? Wow. I don't get a lot, God you win. And I don't pay my rent, God you win. They be one for my hand, but God you win. They be one to keep my joy, but God you win. I say anything else, do not God you win. No, not God you win. No, not God you win. No. I don't change my name to God you win. I no more, I don't buy more to God you win. I say my market no go sell, but God you win. And then we say I no go blue, but God you win. Then my brother, make them try their luck. My God go win, no my God go win, no my Lord go win, no. As you don't pass exam, now God you win. Yeah. And then be say you no go pass, but God you win. Yeah. You wake up, see two day last song, now God you win. Uh -huh. Robbers, they rob, they no see you, brother. They no see you, my sister. Oh, you're better fast. Now God you win, no, now God you win. No, now God you win, no. Anything they do, now God you win. No, now God you win, no, now God you win, no. As now you're now God you win, and he don't tell where you get fine, but God you win. <laughs> See, we go pop champagne today, God you win. Uh -huh. And we go there, dancing, 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 God thank you win. You. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to the winner, and um, 
Yeah, congratulations again. So now we're moving to the announcement of the Akaton winner. And uh, we have our top three already, which I'm going to be announcing now. Um, please, can I have the uh, slide now? So I won't go much into the details of the Akaton, uh, which was hosted on Zindi. So Zindi is an Africa um, Akaton host where you know, data scientists compete uh, to solving problems, not just for the price, but the main thing is solving problem. And most of the time is the local problem, which, you know, as always, we want to push to the global space. Please, can I have this slide now? Um, so, uh, the Akaton uh, problem is about, is an application of a classification problem, fraud detection, uh, so electricity and gas consumption challenge. We, we know we always have this, we have, you know, this issue in Nigeria where some people will go ahead to, you know, to tap, uh, you know, electricity without paying, you know, these are you know, uh, you know, models, uh, machine learning um, solutions that can provide a way to that. All right, so while I'm waiting for... All right, so... Um, so uh, for the competition leaderboard, so the leaderboard was posted upon the close of uh, the competition and it reflects the results of the private leaderboard. The public leaderboard, which was open by the duration of the competition reflected on the portal, uh, the portion of the data sets, and the submissions are no longer accepted and that's why we have our winner. So I will start with the third place. The third place winner is from the University of Bini, Department of Computer Science, Co Department of Computer Engineering, 500 level. The name is Daniel Akwebe. Is he here? <laughs> is Daniel here? Is, is he here? He's not here, okay. The second is a student of Federal University of Technology, MENA, Department of Computer Science, 400 level, Jima Yusuf. Please come forward. And the winner, and the winner, before I announce the winner, you know, we know that everyone is the winner. Every, we all, everyone is the winner, so this is, uh, Done eh, the third position. Okay, so that's done at the, uh, the, the, the first, and this is uh, at the second place. Jimo Yusuf. Okay, okay. Now the first place. Is a student of Federal University of Technology Akure, Department of Statistics, 400 level, and the name is Emmanuel Ebendele. To be the best, number one, and nothing is Emmanuel less. Here? 
Lead me to my destiny. I have waited patiently. I have vision, though I believe. I know I can count on me. So stand up for the champions, for the champions. Stand up, stand up, stand up for the champions, for the champions. Stand up. It's just life. That's how it is. 'Cause we have our strengths and weaknesses. Oh, I have vision. Oh, can't you see? I'm on the move. Make way for me. So stand up. And when I fall down, I have to pick myself back up. And when I fall down, I have to pick myself back up. And when I fall down, I have to pick myself back up. And when I fall down, I have to pick myself up. Stand up. For the champions, for the champions, stand up, stand up. For the champions, for the champions, stand up, stand up. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, so aside the the books presented to the winners. So the first position goes uh, home with a sum of fifty thousand naira, and the second position goes home with a sum of thirty thousand naira, and for the third position, twenty-five thousand naira. All right. Thank you very much uh, for the uh, session. All right, so now. So, uh, with honor, I want to come, uh, call to the stage the founder of, the, of Thomas Adeom University, engineer Dr. Johnson Bamideli Olonushola Adeomi. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry that uh, I could not be with you physically since yesterday. I mean, that we started. But um, I'm so excited to see to be here. Um, and as I look at this young men and women, what you are doing online and physically here. I just remember the words of uh, John F. Kennedy. He said, we don't do things because they are easy. We do them because they are hard. You are a new generation of Nigerians 
and you are going to break boundaries. And I'm, no, I'm so excited to see you here. Um, what you are doing here is so timely. Even the, the meeting between President Biden and, uh, and the Prime Minister of UK this week is also on the same topic. You can see that uh, you are in the forefront of, of this AI and machine learning. And I'm sure you are about to set the stage for global standard. So congratulations for every one of you. Um, permit me to appreciate all the universities that are represented at this program. Um, all the way from all our African countries, many of them online, and a few of them that came here physically. I, I may not be able to name all of you individually, but I so much appreciate you that to honor Nigeria with this particular conference, and not only Nigeria, but our own university. And uh, thank you for your time here. Ladies and gentlemen, and our esteemed participants, distinguished guests. As we come to the close of this International Artificial Intelligence Conference in Nigeria, known as the fourth Indaba X, I stand before you with a profound sense of gratitude and inspiration. Over the past two days, we have witnessed the power of collaborative an immense potential that lies within the realms of artificial intelligence. I was, I was surprised when I saw a Yoruba uh, that uh, you have developed some, uh, uh, an AI to teach Yoruba. I think it's, it's, it's so fascinating and it, it is, you are into something wonderful. Um, our collective pursuit of leveraging AI for the betterment of our country has brought us together from all corners of the globe, creating a vibrant tapestry of ideas, innovation, and partnership. First and foremost, I must extend my deepest appreciation to the organizers and sponsors who made the conference possible. Your wavering commitment to advancing artificial intelligence research and development in Nigeria and on the African continent has undoubtedly paved the way for a brighter future for our, our young people. I believe that this generation is going to be among the most productive in the history of mankind. I also want to express my heartfelt thanks to the dedicated speakers, the panelists, and workshop facilitators who shared their experience, their expertise, insights, and by their contribution. Your contribution has been invaluable in exploring the knowledge and understanding of artificial potential. I'm immensely proud of the vibrant and diverse community of attendees who have graced our campus for this conference and those who have joined online. Your participation has been instrumental in creating an atmosphere of intellectual curiosity, cultural exchange, and unwavering enthusiasm and engagement. You have highlighted the collective determination in leveraging AI as a force of, for positive change in Nigeria and beyond. Your focus on the women is highly appreciative. I'm sure Senator, uh, the, the, my degree Senator from Ekiti State, who is pursuing a gender bill 
at the National Assembly will be highly excited by what you have done. <laughs> Africa, with its rich cultural heritage, its diverse population, and untapped resources, is fast emerging as a hub of AI innovation. I can say with confidence that you are ahead because the topic we are discussing is the same topic that President Biden and Prime Minister of the UK is discussing. I hope this conference has served as a catalyst igniting the spark of creativity and collaboration within our communities. The exchange of ideas and the fog the exchange of idea and the forging of connections here have undoubtedly reverberated beyond the conference halls, shaping the trajectory of AI development in Nigeria and beyond. I therefore encourage all of us to carry the spirit of collaboration and knowledge sharing beyond this conference. I would like to encourage our universities to, look, to collaborate more for our research to work together, and that's the only way by which we can beat the competition. Let us leave this conference with a renewed commitment to harnessing the transformative power of AI to address the pressing challenges faced by Nigeria and our continent. As we move forward, let us strive for innovation that is not only technically advanced, but also ethically sound and socially responsible. Let us seek out collaborations, partnerships, and knowledge, including opportunities that transcend borders and foster a global AI community. In closing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to express my sincere gratitude to each of you for your participation and engagement throughout this conference. The road ahead may be challenging, but with the collective wisdom and dedication of this young and vibrant generation in this room, I'm confident that we shall overcome any obstacle that come our way and forge a brighter future for our nation. And travel very successful journey. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful closing remark. Please, uh, So um, I will use uh, this opportunity to call uh, to the stage the convener uh, of Indaba X, uh, the chairman of the local organizing committee for Indaba X Nigeria, Dr. Mrs. Sekina uh, Follow on show to give us uh, the vote of thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you, sir, for that wonderful um, goodwill message. Um, I want to use this opportunity to thank everyone that have taken time out of no time to attend in the bar, um, X conference. And I also want to remind us, just like 
um, our chancellor has said, you know, the first in the that was held in Lagos was the point of inception. The second one that was held at OOU, that was on music classification, which was the first time that kind of conference is coming up in Africa. And we don't even have Africans that are into music information retrieval. So that shows us that uh, in the bias uh, conferences are always iconic. The music information retrieval society that has been on for into the African community. They don't have any presence in African community. It is not that African don't research into music. They don't use AI for music, but they don't use it for mu uh, Nigerian music. So, and that was also when we started campaigning for localized data. So last year, we went to UI and we talked about security, health issues using AI, and now um, our chancellor told us again, he reminded us that this conference is also iconic because of the human-centric problem that we have looked into and we have tried to talk extensively on. Thank you so much, staff, for bringing that to our notice. So I want to thank everyone for coming and also remind us that this Indaba S conference is a centralized meeting point for all AI innovations in Nigeria. And we have in our midst all our micro AI communities like Data Science Nigeria, AI Saturday, and we have students and postgraduate students and the academia. AI does not revolve around computer science, statistics, and mathematics alone. We have everybody venturing into AI. And just like we said yesterday, that starting from yesterday, because we are here in TAU, our prof said that we should not say they are not TAU, this is TAU. Starting from yesterday, now we believe and we know that every student of TAU are going to incorporate AI into their work. Whether mass comm, nursing, Whatever that you do, they are going to incorporate AI into it because it is our tradition. Anybody we come into contact to must apply AI into what they are doing. So thank you so much. And we also want to thank our vice chancellor. You know, she's also on the board of Indabax and uh, more, most of other community service that she does. She's our mother, she's our teacher, she's our mentor. I'm not just saying that because she's here. A host of, of, of others here can say it. Her first one is here, that uh, uh, Mr. Ezekiel is here. So she's one that has been mentoring us, especially with this community service, volunteering, because all this in the Bax is all about volunteering. We live our own, we live our time and evangelize AI. We want to thank her so much because she has been an excellent host. Thank you so much, ma'am. And then we also want to thank our chancellor because they said that um, if he didn't give her uh, that enabling environment and you know the, the, the freedom to do this, it will not be possible. I know what I'm talking about. We have been doing this voluntary work. We have been going from schools to school, but this is exceptional. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. And um, from the, uh, the, the registration that we have, we have so many diverse things, you know. Things changed from the percentage of registration, you know, percentage of registration from male to female. We saw that there's increase in registration from female. The poster presentation, we saw some trend of novelty and difference in what we have been seeing from the past. We just encourage people to look more into local data sets so that we solve local problems. And we also see some schools that have not been attending in their bikes. We saw them here. And we also saw that we were able to capture majority of the Quara State, um, the KU8 community. So we thank you so much. And we look forward to you attending our Indaba X next year. 
though for now we are almost yes though for now we are almost done with the decision of where we are going next but because we have your contacts we will contact you as soon as the call for paper is out so we thank everyone so much especially our keynote speaker thank you so much sir you know they always say that um um, or with AI community, we love it that you localize AI, and we could see that our prof actually localized our AI. The recommender system that you taught us today, you are still going to include our native clothes there, not just t-shirt and shirt. Thank you so much, sir. And you know, you always uh, also took us through the topic of the human-centric problem and solutions and some applications. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Johannesburg to come and be in our midst. Thank you so much and I want to thank everyone. I am not the only Indaba X person. I'm just the face of the Indaba X. Dr. Bayou Adekombi is not here. I want to thank him. Even in his absence, David Akonji is representing him. He has been there for us. Not only in Daba X Nigeria, but also global in Daba, because that in Daba uh, we are going to in Ghana is also largely planned by us Nigerians. Because, but it couldn't come to Nigeria this year because of our election. So probably next year. So if it is coming next year, that means that we all have to be there. So thank you so much, Tejuma De Afonja. She's not here. She's the lead for AI Saturday Lagos. Uh, he's not here, but uh, Abuno is here. Olani, what do I mean? The lead for AI Saturday Ibadan. Then we also have uh, Ibrahim Olagoke. He's representing TensorFlow Ibadan. They are all the micro AI communities that we have in Nigeria. Thank you so much, and see you next year. Stay blessed. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Um, so after the vote of thanks, um, I have a few announcements to, uh, to make. Um, just a quick one. From our participant, um, he's asking if anyone is going uh, far north, Abuja, Jos, Kaduna, or Bauchi, kindly reach out to me after the program. All right, so I also want to call to the stage uh, someone, uh, you know, in the group when we're organizing this, uh, you know, this program is like a walking machine, you know, from TAU making everything work. When we, uh, when we arrived, everything was set. So I want to call to the stage, uh, Dr. Farumbi Samo to the stage. <laughs> from TAU. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming over to Thomas Adewumi University for this 2023 Indaba X conference. The vote of thanks I've been given, so I'm not repeating that, but I must appreciate um, the opportunity given to us, or to me personally, to serve as the head of the LOC at TAU first by the founder, thank you very much, sir, and the vice chancellor. I also want to use this opportunity to thank all the LOC members that work together with me to make the program a memorable one. I've started getting responses from some participants and it's making me super happy that this program is actually a good one, a good event. Thank you so much and everyone who worked with us, the Central LOC, thank you so much everyone. Um, you have come to Thomas Adewumi University. I'm sure that um, if we pull the data, 90% of us are just coming to Thomas Adewumi University for the very first time. Am I right? So we don't even know what TAU means. Our Vice Chancellor tried to say that um, TAU is not how it is Thomas Adewumi University. So we are a university that is focused on three centric points, science, technology, and medicine. So just before you go, we don't want you to just get a part of TAU without getting, being able to tell the full story you should be able to tell the full story. That's why you're going out with something like this. So when somebody tells you that, what is Thomas Adewumi University and what they offer, I also got responses from some 
who have interacted with our students, and um, they told me that they are smart students. And then we are being told now that we want to train them to be AI-centric students. So what are the courses that we offer at Thomas Adewumi University? We actually have three faculties currently running, and then we have um, Faculty of Engineering starting in September by the grace of God. In the Faculty of Computing and Applied Sciences, we have BSc Biochemistry, BSc Chemistry, Computer Science and Software Engineering, Mathematics, Microbiology, and Physics with Electronics. Then we also have um, Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences. Just Tuesday, a few days before this program started, we had a team of accreditors from NUC to accredit our nursing program. <laughs> Within the two years of our existence, by the grace of God, I can tell you, our students, medical students, I mean nursing students, are already in 300 level, and they are already having their medical training as well. So we offer BSc nursing, BSc nursing, physiotherapy, doctor of physiotherapy, medical lab science, anatomy, and physiology in this faculty. So if you have students who are personally interested in studying nursing, you need to see me before I step down because our nursing program is almost filled up for this next academic session. So I can use the slots that you came for in X to reserve that for you, that you are a candidate, that you are a candidate that came for in We Otherwise, discipline and academic excellence are guaranteed. Very, very, it's an odd cake. So see me that I have a candidate for nursing before I step down. Thank you so much. And then we have our new baby, Faculty of Law program uh, that we just started uh, in this academic session. So we are still admitting for law. If you have any students who have registered or who wrote 2022 UTME, that student can be admitted. I can volunteer to go and pick him or her wherever he or she is to bring them today, give them admission, give them accommodation, everything for law. We, are, we want them to come. So, and then for Faculty of uh, Management and Social Sciences, we have accounting, business administration, criminology and security studies, economics, and mass communication. Now, this is the icing on the, on the cake. I want to give you referral codes that will allow you to hand while you refer students to us. So when you refer... 87 WhatsApp 0905-392-9899 Email admissions at tau.edu.ng Register at Thomas Adeume University and enjoy a lifelong experience. Thomas Adeume University, where godliness, discipline, and academic excellence are guaranteed. And then you do that. You, it's a win-win situation. So you have not come to Thomas Adeume University for nothing. Thank you so much once again for coming. And then we don't say bye bye, we say see you again. Are you looking to start university education? Do you seek where you can be a total person and enjoy the best of university training in a serene and conducive environment with modern infrastructure, qualified lecturers, and staff? Then the search is over. Thomas Adeumi University or Kokwara State is the place for you. Our curriculum is designed to meet student entrepreneur and technical skills necessary to fit into the dynamics of the society. Admissions are currently ongoing into the faculties of basic medical sciences, computing and applied sciences, management and social social sciences to provide the academic springboard for greater heights in life, all at affordable fees and convenience of payment. Visit our website www.tau.edu.ng, call 0803-288-5843 or 0803-247-4987, WhatsApp 0905-392-9899, email admissions at tau.edu.ng, register at Thomas Adeume University and enjoy a lifelong experience. Thomas Adelman Thank University, you. where godliness, oh. discipline, and academic excellence are guaranteed. I was built to be the best, number one and nothing less. Lead me to my destiny. Um, we have a bag here. Eh? Whoever is uh, interested with this bag should... Whoever, is, whoever has it, rather, so whoever is interested, <laughs> whoever has the bag to see the technical team uh, at the back of, uh, of the hall there, 
Whoever lost uh, a black bag should see the technical team. Ask for Mr. Dari uh, to claim the bag. Thank you, everyone. And also, we have a dinner for you guys tonight. So, are we, are we taking them to? Okay. All right, so. Uh, All right, so for people that are interested in leaving today, even though we have the accommodation for you tonight or tomorrow, and we also have a dinner for you tonight, uh, but we don't have a breakfast for you tomorrow. No breakfast tomorrow. So for people that are interested in leaving today, there is a bus available now to take you to Omoaro today, now, today, now. For people that are interested in leaving tomorrow, there will be a bus available by 6.37 to take you to Omoaro tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. If you have any questions regarding that, please see any of our, of our organizers. Thank you, everyone.